Now, have you ever been so ashy that you use your lip balm as lotion? No. I've, I've never been. I don't get ashy. I, you bragging. I'm being so good ass. <laughs> I'm an ashy ass? Yeah, uh, I don't get ashy either. I ain't gonna lie. It's just really? me? I'm not gonna lie. I don't get ashy. You're a moisturized boy. Yeah, I don't, I don't use lotion like that. Wait, what? I don't need to. What? Like, I do use not to, it, not to, make yeah. it. Not to make it weird, though, but you you always say you do be sweating. Maybe not, that's it. Maybe, yeah. I sweat a lot, so maybe I don't... Yeah, I'm, I'm moisturized. He's always, like, moisturized. Yeah, natural moisture. Naturally. Moisture. You know what I'm saying? I'm moist, baby. Is the sweat become your moisturizer? I don't know, but... Probably, yeah. I've never been down bad that much where I use my Blistex to, like, moisturize my skin. No, 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 but I feel like... No, I mean, I know we're being funny, but I feel like using your lip balm mm -hmm. is not that bad. It's like, not that bad. Like, no, Blistex terrible. are... No, Blistex are vastly just rub it, like, anywhere. I don't feel that's Yo, not that bad. I ain't gonna lie. If a dude, if you went out on a date, Reggie, yeah. and a guy pulled up. I mean, don't do it in front of me, but like. And his neck smelled like Blistex. That's a problem. <laughs> no, he could just nah. be using that vapor rub, you know? Where do you use your mm -hmm. Blistex? Mm -hmm. Well, I had a uh, an occurrence this week. Okay. You know, I, I take the train to get to work, and uh, I seem to leave my eucalyptus bath and body works lotion in the car. He does. That he really does use that though. I noticed. Thank that. you. It makes me smell like <laughs> eucalyptus in peace. Yeah, okay. he be smelling like a spa when like, he pulls up. Hello, you know, because we don't do stinkies over here. Nah, yes. facts. You know, we <laughs> don't do bad bo is bad vibes. I'm trying to tell you, we can't do it. We don't oh do that. And we especially, it's getting hotter outside, guys. That's what I'm saying. Use a deodorant with the aluminum. With the aluminum, make sure you get some of that in you. <laughs> don't let them. Don't listen to all that natural shit. Natural shit gonna have you smelling like yeah, it never works. <laughs> okay, now I had a moment. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible and, advice. No, listen, the aluminum one is terrible. But anyway, do, do it work? Continue. It's continue. the best. But do it work? Yeah, unfortunately. All right, cool. Use uh, this is what you should do though. Toothpaste. Use organic toothpaste. But when it come to that, when it come to that real armpit uh, musk, you go hit that. Anyway, so uh, I, I'm walking on the train. You know, I'm wearing a jean jacket. My elbow is exposed. Looking good. Feeling good. Wait. Mm -hmm. A jean jacket with exposed elbows. I'm being trendy that day. How no, 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 the fuck no, does that work? The, the <laughs> jean jacket. No, 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 the jean jacket he wore last week. It was distressed, so it had a little rips. You know. See, I'm, I'm very observant. Good looking, right? She know. I was being trendy it, that like, day. It, it, okay. it has a big ass hole here. I, 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 I'm, I'm following. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. But that's when trendy went wrong. Cause I looked to my right. You know, and it just looked like a snowman just started to live on my elbow. Damn. You never know, just me? lick, lick, mm -hmm. like lick and did the little Cause, dab. Cause, cause that elbow. makes it worse. That makes it worse. Does it really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it dries up after like a few seconds and it makes it worse. That's I don't know. I you never get out. Bro, you. I used to be so annoyed. When I was younger, I vividly remember my dad. When I would be actually like in between my eyes, <laughs> oh, and some he'll shit, lick, like the... he would lick his <laughs> thumb <laughs> and wipe my eye. Come here, Petunia. Ew. <laughs> oh, this <laughs> nigga would lick his thumb and like wipe my eye, wipe my elbow. And spit me like I'm smelling. Like saliva, yeah, yeah. Mind you. Yeah, it's be smelling. Like y'all know my pops. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know no. back then mm. what I know now. Okay. Had I known then no. what I know now, like what he be doing? <laughs> oh my god. I might have kicked that nigga in the nuts. <laughs> nah, that's a good uh, thing. That's a good thing. Nigga, what yeah. the fuck? Nah, that's bonding. Nice. Nah, I don't want to bond like that. Ain't that ain't bonding. I don't want to bond like but, that. But, but when the saliva meet the skin, ain't don't it bond with each other? You tell me. I don't know. You went through it, Playboy. All right. Anyway, <laughs> look to my right. I realized, like, yo, damn, I'm a, I'm a little. For those of y'all that don't get ashy, I do. It's so bad, I could wash my hands and my, all my, my, the wrinkles within my fingers, my knuckles, everything's ashy. It's bad for me. Like, the soap just wash away the moisturization mm -hmm. and okay. the texture to my skin. That means you so, dehydrated. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'm not. It just means he's clean, you know? Yeah, it just means I'm too clean. That's the problem. So, what happened was the train was incoming and I seen a baddie. Of course. <laughs> I seen a baddie. <laughs> Of course. Seen a baddie to the left of me. So like I said, let's let's stay on track. To the right, my elbow was white and ashy. To the left. Okay, well, she's on the left. Okay, exactly. Okay. So I'm thinking to myself, okay. It's still hidden. It's still hidden. <laughs> but this was fucked up. See, the train came in. Yeah. I know that's not a train sound, so my fault, y'all. I don't, I don't battle rap. So when the train came in, the door to, to you know, to enter mm -hmm. was by her now. You feel me? So I was behind the young lady trying to get on. Man, I looked to the right and my Blistex was in my jean jacket pocket. <laughs> and I, I did check my book bag to see if I had to look a lip this. I didn't. Long story short, I might have I might have hit my thumb <clears throat> into the Blistex. And, and put it on your elbow. Just rub it on. It, just rub it on your weenus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's called. Facts. On your elbow. I might have done a little circular motion okay. there. You yeah. rubbing your weenus in public. Yeah. With Blistex. You ever yeah. rub your weenus, Reggie? Yo. I mean, 
Eh, not just ca- not casually. <laughs> nah. <laughs> yeah, because this shit don't get ashy. I don't know. <laughs> I just true story. True story. I feel crazy. It's I- funny you say that because yeah, yeah, yeah. this is. I won't say it's like a hygienic thing. Maybe it is hygiene because mm. I was doing maintenance, as okay. y'all know, as everybody knows. Like I'm bald, yeah. right? That's, that's established. <laughs> so, yeah, like, that's just a, I'm sorry, I, know, funny. I'm I know. I wear a lot of hats. Show us real quick. Just there's a lot. Of, no, I am. Just wait. Okay. You just wait. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get there. Right. I know I wear a lot you of hats. So a lot yourself, of people right? they're like, "Oh my god, are you a hat fish?" And I'm like, "No, bitch. Come on. I just I just wear a lot of hats. Like I can take my hat off." Um, it's more like a pacifier for me. Oh, I always no. describe it like that, like it's a comfort thing. But anyway, I'm bald. <laughs> so what I like to do, I'm in like money saving era. Every okay. man goes through this phase where Are they spend right a lot. Now? I'm in money saving mode. Why? Yeah, because I'm trying to buy some big things. Reggie, what you mean? Why? Uh, I got some big things ahead. So uh, I'm in like money saving mode. I like when be spending his money. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good day when you be spending that money, huh? <laughs> He's my money spending friend. Uh, I really <laughs> but I'm saving today. Okay. So this week, okay. I'm like, you know what? Fuck, you know what I'm going to save this yeah, week? Yeah. I'm going to cut my own hair. Now, mind you, I don't have much. So for me, it's easy to just go to the barbershop. But barbershop for me is like date night I or event I, night. I remember when I asked you <laughs> the barbershop, you got offended. I, I did. It's like, yeah, of course I go to a barbershop. Like, I'm not a barber. I still need maintenance. But anyway, I say all of this to say, how do y'all feel about landing strips? <laughs> Where? <laughs> like women's? Hey, hey, Just hey, 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 run for your I think, life. I think it's more of your guys' opinion. <laughs> no, it's your Freaky opinion, ass. too. Uh, I think it's all of us. I do think if you're like, if you're like engaging with a woman and then you see one, it's like a little cute little surprise. Like, oh. So wait, uh, it's, fun. it's fun. It's I, fun. I like it's fun. That so a landing strip is just a strip of hair near, near the pubic area, mm-hmm. right? So I'm, break it down for me. I'm, I'm cute. Like, I'm a, she, like she went out of her way to do that. I like thinking about that. Like, oh my God, she did this cute little Intention. Yeah, Intention. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Alex, how you feel about it? You like that shit? For, on a woman or on me? <laughs> just in general. <laughs> Just in general, why how you feel? I want to be on you? No, I like. I ain't mad at some hair. No, I got one on me. That's why I asked. Oh my god! I did and not you need gave to know me that. With the hair? <laughs> yeah. I did not need to know Wait, that. How do we? How do we go no, from you your hair to your? No, because what happened? You gave was, me that with that shit. I'm cutting my hair before the pod. Now, mind you. I still groom myself for the podcast, even though I I always wear a hat. You okay. ain't put the one inch razor to your pubes, man. No, you for did whatever it. reason. <laughs> The Break. razor oh, that I use. Oh, he's about to show up his landing strip. I'm scared. It stopped working. <laughs> so I'm cutting my hair and I'm like, get the fuck. So now, need to know exclusive, the head. Oh, shoot. The head looks Wait, fine. It, it yeah, looks yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. I look, like, from good. A, you can't even tell. <laughs> but when I turn around. <laughs> Yo, this is. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, go down a little bit, say one pause. <laughs> Bro, my yeah, clippers like, stopped working. You look like Aang. Bro, Wait. the clippers just stopped working. Wait, hold he on. He looks like an airbender. <laughs> Uh, don't the other way, the other way. What is happening? Oh, shoot. Just look at my Wait, look, look, look at Reggie, look at Reggie. Look, look at Reggie. It's like a little design. Look, look at Reggie, look at Reggie. Look at Reggie, say, boss. It looks like a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> that shit like a cross. It's like you were getting religious that day. You were supposed to go over there to CVS. You were supposed to go over there to Wall Bounds to go get you the shit out the pack and finish that off, man. Damn. What the fuck? Wait, put your hat. Can you see what a hat? Let me see. Can you see? Uh, yeah, you can see wow. what a hat on. It looks like you got a little. You should have finished the job. What the fuck? Bro, my clippers broke. It looks like some rock. Let's go dash it. Mid haircut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I got like half oh, of a CEO. You missed a shoddy put it on me. I got half of a half of a mohawk. Damn. You ain't want to go get Wait, the- Wait, can't you use a phone razor? Phone? I don't put razors to my head because then I get bumps. I got yeah. sensitive skin, so oh, I, go, 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 go. I use the clippers okay, still, okay, okay. as if oh, I was getting okay. lined up, as if I had a hairline. Yeah. But I, I just yeah. use the clippers to shave my whole head. Black people aren't supposed to use a razor, bro. Yeah. Mid shave today, the landing strip was the only thing I kept. I couldn't like my clippers <laughs> just broke, hey, so hey, I had hey, to hey, ask hey, my hey. people like, "Oh, if they really freaky, they gonna fuck with me That's extra tough. today." That's How y'all tough. feel about my shit? I, I'm very get out. This is the first time I've ever had a landing strip. I'm very proud of you for showing us. Yeah, it shows growth. Does I it, feel like a year yeah. ago he would not have taken his hat off with, right. the, with the landing strip like that. But I never yeah. had a landing strip. It's cute. I like it. It's like a little question mark. Yo. Is it? Re- I yes. can't really see it. Like, I just know there was one part of my head I couldn't get. So I'm you like, look super, you look like you study study uh, spiritual studies in the mountains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like, can't see me from the back. So yeah, yeah. are you saying he's a monk? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A monk. Yeah. This nigga called me. That a was monk. a creative way to say that. You yeah. know what's funny, Alex? I saw you without your hat this weekend. Yeah. 
For sure. What? I was on oh. IG. He was giving it to us. Yeah, yeah, no he was giving way. it to us really? on IG. Yeah. I know. Fuck, Savon be pressed about my looks. He always bring it up. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> you posted it. No, no, no. Not this week. Last week. Oh, my week before that. Yo, he dropped a banger selfie. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something like, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm going to big you up, brother. So nah, good. you don't got to big me up. That's for the ladies, bro. What's Yo, up hey, with you? Yo, what you Show us the front. Show us the front real quick. Just the front. That's crazy. Go on the ground. See, that's crazy. Go on the ground. You don't have to see it so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Say, Vaughn showed it, and y'all are like, yeah. like hip hop. So, you know, we got to oh, show. Oh, he's hip and he's hop. I mean, that, that's strictly hip hop. All right, my fault. No, nah, calm it down. But yes, <laughs> thank you for uh, looking at me. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I, I was much. just saying, yeah, I, I had a lot going on today. I felt real bad. It, yeah. It's weird. Like, it's crazy. Every time, as a bald man, I don't know, newly bald listeners, because I know we got a lot of people transitioning. <laughs> There's a lot of people who may not know how to keep up Ooh, this maintenance. I wonder what it feels like to be, like, newly bald. It sucks. Like, you made that decision, <laughs> it and it's your first day with, like, the fresh bald Nah, that head. shit is ass. <laughs> It's like the you feel a new breeze in my mind. Your scalp. In my mind, yeah. I still got a hairline. You That's do. valid though. You, you do, do though. You do. What you do? You got like a three o'clock, like a three o'clock shadow, a little bit. I got it's a, it's a line though. Yeah, yeah. It, but in my mind, Dude. I feel like I got like a Paul George. I mean, you can't do that, but <laughs> I mean, but it's there though. Like, like a Jalen Rose in my mind. So the fact that I wake up every day and it's not that, it's a little depressing. But two hour transitioning. Don't we get too mad at listeners. Jaylen. That's Beijing on Jalen. It might be. Yeah, it might be. Don't be too mad. It's Beijing it's on the But he still got Vegas. a lot of hair though. Don't don't sleep. He just the extra. Okay. Yeah, I am mad at that. But speaking to my transitioning <laughs> listeners, the, the guys who are in between. Wait, what? Are, yes. You gotta be clear about that. What you? They transition from hair to uh, no yeah, hair. That's what you gotta say that because you know that can mean. When you're transitioning, it usually means genders. That's what I'm saying. You gotta be clear. I'm just saying. I'm speaking for my community. Yes. Like, I can't talk, man. Like, this yes. tra we transition into transition. This is the, no this you is look the at bald it. bonding segment. Yeah, yeah like, Simone is great, there, there, there's moments where <laughs> you, you, you gotta figure that thing out. And so for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, I never encountered this. This is the first one. Oh. This is the first. You gonna like keep it. it? It's silly. I like it. Um, no, I, I like. I'm gonna go clean yeah. that up tomorrow. Like, <laughs> I'm not a landing strip guy. <laughs> like, I like smooth. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Maybe yeah. a little five o'clock shadow. And you don't want to go to the ball, but just be like, yo, hit that spot right there in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to get a ball of forty to like, yo, hit that right. I debated on one it. time. <laughs> I debated on that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In the yeah. office, do you always wear a hat? <laughs> um, I mix it up. Yeah. Cause sometimes sometimes you go hatless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. sometimes. I like that. Cause my coworkers, <laughs> it's like y'all don't really know me. Like, Yo, I don't really know. I've been showing, I've been showing up to the office looking crazy, looking busted, yeah, yeah. literally like just baggy clothes. And then on yeah. the weekends, I know they'd be confused because I'm, I'm a catfish. Like yeah. I literally, I look so good on the weekends, but I don't, I don't prioritize my office like it's look true. at all. The only yeah. time I look good at work is when we record. Cause I gotta come it. record that too. But uh, I, I don't know when they be in there, so I just be helpless. No, I hide in the bathroom. Like, I told you about Flo Millie. I hid in the bathroom. Did you say no. Oh, like, no, but like yeah. men, you guys don't have to do anything but have like a good fit, no? Yeah. Because me, if I don't have my hair, makeup, or fit done, then I look crazy. Yeah, that mean a lot, though. Don't don't let you just pull up with the sweats that you that you know you should have washed. slept in, yeah. Facts. <laughs> you know the ones you know you should have washed. Smell rank. You know the one. Uh, uh, I told you it's a clean pod. You go to work in sweats? I can't go to work in sweats. You can't go. It's a radio. You can't go to work. But yeah. I, you know, my yeah. sweats are like. Like this. My, my shit yeah, a little, yeah, my shit yeah. a little too corporate for too, that. Too corporate. I think so. For sweatpants, yeah. yeah. Do it, I get yeah. away with like jeans and shit, but I can't do sweats. Yeah, nah, at my job, we curse on the radio, so. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Sirius XM. Yeah, shout out to Sirius. <laughs> I am not mad at that. Holy yeah. shit, I cannot wait to introduce myself today. Uh oh. But you start. Wait. You want me to start? Yeah. What? Okay, so let's go. We're going to go, 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 go a little Jaden style. Oh, way. Hold on, hold on. Because I remember I'm in my bag. I got to go. Okay, loud. okay. Okay, let's yeah, do it. Yeah, tell me which one y'all like. Should I go after Alex or you? I don't care. However y'all want. Okay, you did the grand finale. Go Alex, me, say <laughs> Okay, let's go. Hey, what up, y'all? Welcome to the Need to Know podcast. I'm your boy, A, as always, the Paco Rabone Poppy. Never alone. I'm always with the posse. Hello guys, it's me Regina, and today I feel like a rapper right now because I have these new in-ear earphones, <laughs> and I have one dangling, you know, like they do just on in stage. Case. Just dangling. in case. Yes, I didn't want to do the headphones anymore, but I have to hear Pierre's voice, so I couldn't just dish the headphones. <laughs> and now we bought it, and now I can wear my hair up, and stay tuned for that. Hey, yo, what's going on, boy? It's your boy, S-A-V-O-N. <laughs> <laughs> oh! See what I'm giving it to him? That nigga turned to John Nah, me and Lil' Fab. No, no, that's fabulous. S-A-V-O, you feel what I'm saying? Like, nah, I know the, the Paco Rabone 
poppy. That should been killing me. Like, yo, I ain't got nothing. It's S A V O. S A V O. That's kind of hard, though. You feel what I'm saying? I S A V O. It's your boy S to the A V. You feel what I'm saying? Like, he ain't doing it in the Jay Z voice. Nah, that's the fact. That's fast. I know. I know. But I know what you're saying. But like the way you're saying it. And we in Brooklyn. You feel what I'm saying? It's your boy S A V O. And. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wait, it's a need to know I... podcast. And the end is for need to know. You feel me? You okay. did. Let's do okay. it. Let's do it. Let's Wait, do it. Should, okay. I, should I do an intro or should I be the only one left that keeps it on the fly? Like, I don't know how long hmm. this is going to last, but I felt this <laughs> no, in my like way it. driving no, through the Bronx. So I'm like, S A V. Yeah. Ah, no, I genuinely <laughs> like it. I, I, I genuinely I like it. I appreciate that. I tried to do that intro <laughs> like on, it, yeah. on my other part, but my other part is like therapeutic and shit. You can't really be too hype. It's not really hip hop. Nah, they were like, do you need to look in the mirror? Yeah. Like S-A-V-O. 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 And it was like, do you know who you are? And you feel what I'm saying? Yeah, we got a lot to talk about this week. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, some sad up, news. Some, some, some definitely some sad news. Some yeah. tragic news. I can't wait to hear everybody's thoughts on it. Yeah. Um. Obviously, at the time of this recording, episode two fifty eight, I believe, something like that. Um. Some some news came out uh, about two sixty. Two sixty. Oh shit! I am. Yeah, in, we are in the future. Two sixty. Yeah. Um. There's some news that we definitely want to discuss, but before we even get there, I do want to implore everybody to like, subscribe, comment. We see the YouTube. There was a time. <laughs> there was a time. Well, I used to hate y'all niggas on YouTube. Facts. I'm not gonna lie to you. You probably still do. I don't. Oh, I good. appreciate them. Oh, fire. I You're appreciate welcome. the love. I appreciate the hate. I fire. appreciate the view. Because they just giving us something. That's all yeah. I ever wanted. That's it. So shout out Interaction. to Google. Interaction. That's yeah, it. That's it. Yeah. So if you're listening to the Engaging. podcast, please make sure y'all do some of those things. Um, again, I think this is going to be a very interesting uh, discussion, conversation, because I can speak for us all. We're all in line with how we feel about everything. Everything mm-hmm. that transpired with Diddy, everything that transpired with Cassie, the video that came out last week is horrible. It's disgusting. Um, but there, there, there's it's, it's even deeper for somebody like myself. Um, all of us were born in the 90s, right? Mm-hmm. 90s, mm-hmm. a prominent time in hip hop. The rise, um, the impact, the bad boy. You can't talk about hip hop, rap, 90s, early 2000s without mentioning bad boy, right? For sure. Um, so we're definitely going to get there. Um, but I, I did want to make sure that we kind of preface that. Also, trigger warning for anybody who mm-hmm. may, um, you know, be be triggered by some of the conversations that we're going to have. Yeah. We're not going to show the video <laughs> on YouTube, but we're, we're definitely going to discuss some of the things that yeah. we talked we're about. We're going to so. be discussing domestic violence, domestic abuse. So feel free to, like, if that truly triggers you, even just, like, the the thought of it, you could skip ahead. We'll have timestamps. But, yeah, we're definitely going to be talking about it because it was such a huge story. It is. It is. Um so what well, I want to begin personally, first off, I want to begin with fuck Diddy. Oh yeah, for straight sure. up. Mm-hmm. I just want to begin it's with over. that. Fuck it's Diddy. Over, yeah. It's over. Cooked, it's clipped. Boy. There's no apologies. Fuck Diddy. I but ain't knowing no apologies. My fault. The, the 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 place that I want to begin is my first recollection of hip hop is Bad Boy. Gotcha. Is Diddy. Is Mace, mm-hmm. is Shiny Suits, mm-hmm. is that era. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. it's true. So Fish, not Fish only- Fish Islands. What happened? Fish Eye Lens on all the videos, video. yeah. Yeah, marketing, yeah. all of it, yeah. right? Like, for me, that is where I went back to when I first seen this video. Mm-hmm. Definitely our introduction because it's it's, it's over. Like Reggie said, mm-hmm. it's over. It's disgusting. Um, I don't even really want to describe the video. I feel like anybody listening to this podcast, they're well versed in the culture, so they probably have seen the video. Very violent. It's everywhere. Yeah. Very CNN violent. broke the news. So. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I also want to say anything that he's ever denied now allows me or makes me or forces me to think that everything that's said about him is true. For sure. Um, yeah, we could start right there with, he he lied. Mm -hmm. Uh, him and his lawyers put out statements when, uh, Cassie had originally formed her lawsuit against him. Like, yo, they just looking for a payday. Uh, I didn't do any of the things that are alleged about me. Someone I so, will clear my name. I will like, clear my name. The truth is going to get out just for us to see it with our own two eyes. So, yeah, yeah it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's And it's crazy how, like, he would have stood by that statement that he made a few months ago that we just said, like, oh, I'm going to clear my name. I didn't do, do, I didn't do anything. He would have stood by that if this video didn't come out and we didn't all see it. That's the whack part about it. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, all right, cool, man. Who are you trying to fool? Because I, if you're continually con- trying to fool yourself, brother, you are at the end of the road. I, I wonder in his head uh, who advised him. But knowing Diddy now, in hindsight, with all this information, it looks like a person who was probably advised, mm-hmm. but didn't want to listen. With that ego. Yeah. With that enormous, braggadocious ego. Oh, but I'm Puff, I'm Diddy. They'll probably get it. They'll understand. In that video, like Savon is about to get into, 
He didn't apologize to the to Cassie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looked like a dude who got caught, right? Yeah. Like, damn, the world is coming in on me. What do I do? I well, have let's listen to yeah. I'm sorry, Pierre. Let's let's listen to the apology and then we can react. Mm-hmm. Got you. If it ever loads. Yes. Because that's how technology works. <laughs> Things well, just speaking to if, I mean, when Alex said it's that. It's so oh. difficult to reflect on the darkest times in your life. But sometimes you got to do that. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom. But I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions in that video. I'm disgusted. I was disgusted then when I did it. I'm disgusted now. I went and I sought out professional help. I had to go into therapy, and go into rehab. I had to ask God for his mercy and grace. I'm so sorry. But I'm committed to be a better man each and every day. I'm not asking for forgiveness. I'm truly sorry. Now, mind you, um, when the uh, when Cat when the whole Cassie thing first came out, Diddy put on his story on, on his feed. His response says, "Enough is enough." For the last couple of weeks, I've sat silently and watched uh, people try to assassinate my character, destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have made have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear. Again, this is in all caps. He says, I do not, I do not, I did not do, excuse me, any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Mm-hmm. That is, it was crazy then reading that statement, but it's even crazier now because like, this is, I know we said this in the chat, but this is literally like, one instance over the course of over 10 years so it's like i don't want more to come out obviously because there is plenty more oh, yeah. just because it's like extremely triggered for people to see that over and over again but it's like imagine what we don't know like <laughs> imagine what was not caught on video like most importantly we saw a young lady who yeah. was trying to escape yeah that's what right? really like like a lot of the rhetoric the scariest part, yeah. right like a lot of the rhetoric around when the lawsuit was originally brought up was Yo, why she ain't trying to get out of there? It was so many questions mm-hmm. shooting at Cassie's <laughs> character or just people confused. Well, she could have left. We clearly saw a very powerful man who did not give a fuck who he was in that hallway or in that corridor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We all in this room know who P. Diddy is. Yep. He knows that. The fact that he could go out there and do what he did is very telling because it makes you think like, wow, you, 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 you're really bold, right? And back to the rhetoric around like, why didn't she leave this and that? I don't think people really do a lot of, uh, and again, not their fault because again, we're all either a super fan, we're a casual fan, or we moderately really pay attention. But if you go into the psychology, into a man who was probably in his latter 30s when he originally met Cassie, and Cassie was probably 18, 19 at the time. Yeah. When folks were saying, yo, why didn't she leave? All that t- sort of rhetoric. I just thought to myself, I'm like, do you not think that this man who is super powerful, not just to 18-year-old Cassie, mm-hmm. but to grown-ass men, <laughs> do you not know that he probably set something in place in terms of, yo, the way she lives is going to be tracked by him? Or we even heard reports that some of her medical records were reporting back to Diddy, right? So I think that was the most telling part of the video for me, right? Yo, did she go trying to escape? She was trying to leave she was trying- with her bags. Imagine like- how many times she tried to mm-hmm. do that. Yeah. And like speaking, speaking of what Alex is saying, like the power and like her trying to leave, people asking why she couldn't leave. Like in the original um, lawsuit last year, they said like even if she were to try to leave, he had the resources to track her. Like if she like Private investigators. if she left and maybe stay with a distant relative and like some island or like a hotel, he could find her. So she mm-hmm. literally had nowhere to go. And like I just think about like I could not stop thinking about how like 
maybe she had attempted to leave a few times, but like that moment where she had to accept, like, this is like, I can't escape. Like, I can't imagine mm-hmm. like what that felt like for her mm-hmm. and for her to be stuck in that for five, six, seven, eight, like more years. So that's like kind of crazy. Well, just think about, like you said, Alex, the power dynamic between the two from age, from money, from status, from experience, life experience. Um, all of those things play a factor in any relationship on any level, but then yeah. you magnify it to the level of a ditty, right? Like, Diddy has been synonymous with black excellence. Diddy has been synonymous with achievement, with overcoming, with money, with flashiness, with reach. We've seen Diddy with politicians, with rappers, mm-hmm. with with, with uh, media. We've seen Diddy with everybody. He's mm-hmm. one of the few Every people industry. in our country that has <laughs> translated culture. Yeah, right. He's tr- like he he's one of maybe four, five, six. And that's another part of this element. And, and again, I do want to say prayers are always with Cassie um, and, and anybody who's been a victim of domestic violence, anybody who has been in these situations. Yeah. Uh, we've heard all of the stories about Diddy being a monster for so many years. But over the course of the years, and, and this is just speaking for me, it's always tough to see or determine what's true and what's not because people lie. Men lie. Women lie. Video don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Video don't lie. So at that point, and not only that, I think most people in the industry had some type of idea, right? Like, I don't claim us to be in the industry, personally. I think industry adjacent, yeah. maybe we are broaching in. Like, yeah. we well, have not, more not like, access. Not yeah. directly in those but circles. But I'm yeah. not in Hollywood, <laughs> god damn it. Like, yeah, yeah, I know some niggas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. like, we're, I, I, I haven't been there, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But even down to, like, somebody like myself, to a casual person, like, we we've all kind of heard stories um and to oh, see the sure. bravery in, in in cassie for coming out and speaking and uh jaguar right who mm. has been a proponent gene deal who has yeah. spoken against diddy former body there's been a lot of people a lot of former artists aubrey day from yeah. um, danity kane, danity danity kane. kane. Yeah. there's been a lot of people who spoke to the monster that diddy is and who he's been and he's hid behind his brand behind <laughs> his accomplishments behind his money yeah. and now that we're able to see behind the curtain it's like nah fuck him you, it's fuck him. You just so you know what stuck with me because you brought up our childhood, right? And one of the songs that one of my mom's favorite songs is "Every Step I Take," and I think it's so prophetic that that song was about Puff, you know, missing Biggie, and we just happened to be recording this on the birthday of Biggie. Really? Yeah. Today is Biggie's birthday. Damn. <laughs> I think there's something so prophetic in that because when I was a kid, right, and again, mm-hmm. back to seeing behind the veil, and I would hear stories about why it transpired and why it happened. At work, when I hear songs like, I'm going, going back, back, back to, to Cali. Cali. And then I, and I, it, may, it always makes me wonder a little bit like, man, what was the thinking? East Coast versus West Coast was at a war. Mm-hmm. Biggie <laughs> is pound for pound one of the probably the most quotable rapper at the time. Yeah. He's super popular at least, right? Because I don't want to take from anybody else's success at the time. Mm-hmm. But where did the, did the bad boy team, where did that energy come from? <laughs> like, wow. was it Biggie that just wanted to go out there to the West Coast? Right? What, what, what is that? So to me, uh, again, back to what Savon is saying, we're pulling back the veil and actually looking at, wow, another instance for me, right? 2015, I think I was still in college or I just had graduated, some shit like that. Diddy's son was playing football at UCLA. Yeah. When I heard the story came out that Diddy threw a kettlebell at one of the coaches. Yeah, the kettlebell. Bro, a ke- I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, you, Did I say it incorrectly? Yeah, uh, kettlebell. Kettle, uh, I'm so sorry. You, kettlebell. You, you yeah. I was like, okay, that's a little alarming. Yeah. Because... For me, at least, that was the first time I, and again, I didn't see the video, of course, but they did confirm that it happened. I said, yo, that is, that's pretty violent for Mr. Love, Love, Love. That's pretty violent for Mr. Puff Daddy. Mm-hmm. That's pretty violent for, I just want to have a good time and party. Mm-hmm. Little but did it, we know. Little did we know. Yeah. That was just like the ice, the ice on the, on the, on the, on the tip of the iceberg. The tip of the iceberg, bro. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, again, it, it is interesting in hindsight to look at these things, but they have been in front of us for a while. But the the one of the things with me, so yeah. I appreciate and I love what it is that we do as media, as cultural pundits, right? So some of the people that I listen to, some of the people that a ton of us listen to, right? The Charlemagnes, the Joe Buttons, the academics, I think those are probably the biggest voices in hip hop, right? So naturally, in this culture, we're going to hear that. We're going to see when the blogs are reporting on what it is that they say, and that's cool. 
I always think there should be a balance in life. The balance is they provide entertainment. We provide entertainment. So anybody yep. listening to this podcast is a form of entertainment. We are not experts or professionals on certain topics. But it is a cultural event, and I think we've all, you know, built that equity to speak about certain things. Mm. But the other aspect is listening to experts and professionals. So what I do, and one of the reasons I do this is because we have this podcast and we do have to report on it, but I get obsessive over certain stories, right? I'm the guy that watches a movie who sees an actor or an actress that I'm like, holy shit, they're really talented. I want to know where they're from. I yeah. want to know their upbringing. I want to know who their parents are. I'm that guy. Like mm -hmm. when I'm watching a movie, the rabbit hole. I'm Google man. <laughs> I, don't, oh my I, God, stop, I love Googling during movies. <laughs> like, yeah. I stop watching I the movie because I want to. I, I yeah. really want to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So for me, when I'm watching these things, and again, it's always twofold. I'm gonna get the entertainment aspect from it, mm -hmm. but then I'm also gonna go and I'm gonna type in body language experts. I'm mm. going to type in um, people who are experts in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. I want them to also break down what certain on. patterns, what certain behaviors mean yeah. mm -hmm. in real time. So when you see somebody defenseless on the floor lying still because they're afraid, right? I'm talking about when Diddy pulled Cassie's hair, slammed on the ground. She's laying there as almost if she's lifeless. It's not that she's lifeless or uh, I don't know. Maybe she could have been in that moment. But from what the experts have said, it's a defense mechanism. Like we let, me not let me not respond. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me yeah. not act And hoping back. that they'll like leave you alone. Yeah. Hoping it'll leave me alone. Yeah, like oh we God, playing possum. This shit is yeah. so yeah, fucking did, did, sad. You get what I'm saying? Like, did did he sock her or did he pull her hair? On it, the it doesn't. I don't a know. A variation of everything. Okay, it, that's the best. It way was to put violent. It. Yeah. It's very it was violent. violent. It was triggering. Yeah, he kicked like yeah. Variation What's the last everything? thing I like? I, I really want you to li like. Mm -hmm. What is the last thing that you felt the need to kick? A ball. <laughs> Words. That's all I'm. Legit. Thinking. Yeah. You Look, get what I'm saying? My so trash can when it fell in the street. There, like uh, you, you wouldn't even kick a dog. Nah. 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 You get that? So nah. I think. There's also there's there's always a balance. But I did kick a little spider off my car because it was about to enter the window. I'm you sorry. kicked that shit. I'm sorry. Punted. You must have put a dent through your shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why you did that? I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. I'm glad that you do that, right? Especially with the experts. And the experts have been analyzing stuff like this over the years Facts. as well, right? Like even the way um it got released, I was surprised it didn't get released through TMZ. Yeah, I think that was, was interesting, but I'm yeah. happy it didn't because I think we need to Absolutely. get news from news sources. That was true. Absolutely, I, literally. I mean, I didn't bring it up because <laughs> yeah. like there's there's more important things to think about. But the entire time this news broke, I was like, this is fucking journalism, Ab baby. You know, you they know, went and got the clip, CNN, and broke yeah. the news. Like, yeah. boom. Yeah, and you want to know what what my where my mind went? It went, oh shit. Hmm. Did he son put out a diss track mm -hmm. antagonizing the feds last week? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Everybody knows you can't play with the feds because they'll play with you back. Oh, okay. And then it makes you realize, oh, didn't they just go raid, through, his raid his house? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that tells you there's a bigger case here at play. Yeah. <laughs> and they're potentially, I could be wrong, right? But they're potentially dropping nuggets to the general public now. Like, mm -hmm. hey. We found some shit. We found some shit. Yeah. We're going to bring it to the court. But here's just some things we want y'all to see because y'all ego, because, because y'all so braggadocious in that corner, right? And um, the fans, right? When you're a fan of something, right? So many people tend to attach their favorite song, their favorite movie, and attach that to their feelings on a very severe matter. And that's kind of what I saw here today. I don't think anyone is above critique. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's, it's actually extra for the people that we hold in certain positions to do certain things, right? Mm -hmm. So for me to see people like really confused, I'm like, dog, like, what, what, is, what is there to be confused about? What, 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 what is there to defend? Yeah. I don't get it. And, and it makes me think about human nature. What is it about human nature that makes us turn off facts and go right to, yo, well, he put out my favorite album. Oh, well. Who was saying that? Yeah, I didn't see but it. But people don't say it. I that, didn't that's, see it either. That's what I'm realizing. Were people like tweeting this? People or? don't say it, but you realize that's what's in their defense, right? Because I was talking to somebody, right, who's mm -hmm. he's really big on Diddy. And hey, I had to check him. Yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> nah, you good. Yeah, no, you, you got it. No, you're right. <laughs> no, but this is that's a serious matter. No Diddy. <laughs> Thank you for that. Appreciate you. And a lot of the same points that he kept revisiting when I was talking about what had happened and what transpired was 
yo, but this is Diddy. Like, yo, we can't get rid of that catalog. Like, his brain completely pivoted from the important severe matters at hand directly to what they attached themselves to. Yeah. What made them feel so, uh, what made them feel uh, sound, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And it's making me realize that that's probably part of the reason why people don't get believed. Yeah. But just shut the fuck up. Yeah. I'm listening. If you did it. <laughs> like, you did what you did. You know what you did. And you are trying to piss on us and tell us it's raining <laughs> by giving us a fake apology, by saying the truth will set you free. The truth has set a ton of people free. <laughs> the only person that's not free after the truth is you. <laughs> that's it. Like, just shut the fuck up. You know what you did. Like, we've been using this term throughout the Drake and Kendrick Lamar beef, master manipulator. Yeah. This is that on full display. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Did he, like, vote or die? Swaying people yeah. in, in a political way. Mm. Love. Trying to rebrand who you are and making this R&B album. Getting your back. Staying your back. Getting your back. Yeah. Staying your back. Like, can't, can't forget he gave uh, everyone, or not everyone, he gave people their masters back mm -hmm. and then yeah. had them sign mm -hmm. the NDAs right. as a way to say kind of like, hey, like whatever you know, make sure like, I'm going to do you a favor, but make sure you don't really speak ill on my name. I think that was very... Uh, distasteful and like you were saying very manipulative, manipulative. Yeah. absolutely and he gave yeah. cassie a shout out during his recent speech <laughs> yeah like knowing that he did what he did but i think like he's mm. doing this he's moving like this because he it's been a decade's worth of mm -hmm. him getting away with it as mm -hmm. alex was saying how bold he was just to walk down that hotel hallway knowing that we know who he is he could yeah. be spotted that's a powerful he point. probably does this in front of people and like like the ab abusing women yeah. yeah and like he just he just keeps getting away with it so he's used to it so he thought like hey i know i did all this shit that she said in the lawsuit but mm. eh, i'm gonna get away with it again that's why crazy, he did that the crazy thing is we've heard countless amount of stories but there's different women there's different women that have stories he's had an ex uh gina hyun oh yeah gina she's, she's gina, going back and forth she's with, uh, been going back and forth she did an interview with tasha k a few yep. times she went back and forth with uh young miami oh um on, yeah. on, on on these allegations crazy. and yeah, miami called you you and i some whole ass niggas and she was really chilling with one That's and she, crazy she did do that she it's did crazy. text did do uh on twitter <laughs> and did tell gina hey if i wanted to i would have had diddy and this, do is, some things, and this so. is all right in front of our faces. Yeah, in real time. But again, and that's, and that's why <laughs> yeah. I hate that it has to be this way, but sometimes proof, like actual proof is one of the only ways that can sway the public mm -hmm. because I'm sure there was a ton of people and I'm mm -hmm. sure even somebody like a Carisha, right? Like, mm -hmm. sure. And, and you know what? Speaking of Carisha. Carisha. Carisha, whatever. I'm so sorry. Her <laughs> name don't matter. His name don't matter. Okay. Nobody's matters. Right. Right. But you know what does matter? It's just a blatant, blatant, let me piss on you and tell you it's raining when she's winning all these awards. I know it sounded like hate mm. when people was talking about it a few years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. I know it did. Mm -hmm. But when you are somebody's respectfully. Yeah, play your shit. Yeah. When you somebody's, when you, when you a pimp in pimp culture, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. men use women to pimp or manipulate other women. It's Absolutely. like when we were slaves back in the day, mm -hmm. they didn't want the one Negro to be able to read. Because if that one Negro not to read, Free to he go, the same shit with Carisha to me. Carisha. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you good. I keep I fucking care. her name up. I'm not I'm from the South. I'm wondering, like, yeah. I, don't want, I don't wish this on people, but, like, I wonder if Carisha is currently a victim as well. Because she's kind of like... She may not even know. She may be Stockholm the house like, niggas. What is happening to she her right now? She might be right the now, house like, niggas. Stockholm syndrome. We all, we've all Heavy. seen Django. Heavy, yeah. Samuel L. Jackson character could have <laughs> yeah. been her in Absolutely. like woman form. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Because you don't know Diddy. No. You just came on the scene. Yeah. Especially because she's from Miami, right? So Miami, pimp culture is pretty prominent. So again, a case of Stockholm syndrome where you not even be realizing what's happening to you. She's yeah. new to the game. Absolutely. Yeah. She's new to the game. These yeah. powerful people, they prey on those type of women mm -hmm. who it's, will do anything for a dollar. And she said it out her own mouth. Her whole brand, her whole identity, her whole music career is being a hoe off the bread. Not even that. <laughs> Living too. off of it. Not even just that, too. I, I have a lot of questions about, you know, the Justin Bieber aspect, mm. the, uh, Everything the Usher there. aspect. Usher was on Howard Stern and Usher said, hey, like, Howard Stern asked Usher, hey, if your son was in the same predicament, would you send him back to uh, the Puffy Flavor Camp or whatever you call it? Usher was like, no. No. no without absolutely, a thought, no. Absolutely not. And absolutely like, not. You look at Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, it's, it's almost like ever since Justin Bieber touched the whole Diddy sphere, yeah. he has not been himself. Like something's been up, bro. The, yeah. the, the mother mm -hmm. of your children 
One of them is deceased. Rest in peace, Kim Porter, who we've heard some of Diddy's former bodyguards speak to the violence that she endured yeah. from Diddy, right? Still waiting for that to be proven true. Again, when I hear and when I read everything, everything about you is true. You was fucking Meek Mill. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah, that audio was You was crazy. like, and, and I don't even know if it's the audio. Fuck the audio. The audio from what I read, it was from another gay porno. It may not even be Meek and Diddy, but I don't yeah, give I don't a fuck. Yeah, I think that was real audio. Everything yeah. about you, everything that's been said about you, <laughs> It's true to me Absolutely. because when we, as a culture, yeah. said, you know what, we're gonna let things play, play out. Yeah. When you begged for that by putting out an apology and saying, "Hey, the truth will set me free," mm -hmm. <laughs> when you did that, when you knew what you did, mm -hmm. that's crazy. You could have easily just shut the fuck up, easily, but you chose to try to you you playing in people's faces, you playing in yeah. our faces yeah. as a culture, as a black man, as, as a black man, and I don't do that. Alex, how long? We've been doing this podcast for a very yeah. long time. You don't ever hear me get on this podcast and do this whole race baiting shit as a black man. But I'm going to tell y'all the truth. As a black man, there are only about three, four black men that I look up to that says, oh, this is the pinnacle. This is where we can get. Thank you for all the work that you've laid yeah. for us to kind of get to this hopefully one day. Mm -hmm. Right? There's a very short, a list, short list of men. It's a short list. Yeah. Diddy was on that list. For sure. And so for you to manipulate us, for you to weaponize us in that way and not give a fuck while you knew what you was doing. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And apologizing once it came out. Come on, dog. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can't do that. It looked tactless. I can't do that. Yeah. It, it's tasteless. It's tactless. It's disgusting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, like being attached to my first memory of hip hop, mm -hmm. hip hop changed my life. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? The reason that whoever's listening to us on this podcast is because of hip hop. I'm not a Thanks. rapper. I, I'm not a fucking dancer. I'm none of those things in hip hop. But the significance of hip hop has had the radius of it has expanded so far beyond what it ever thought in 1972, whenever it was created. I don't know the year, but in the <laughs> 1970s, right? Nobody thought it would take it this far. The Your artist said age. that. Biggie said that. Yeah. Whoever thought hip hop would take it this far. So for him to be one of those pillars and to stand for what I believe he stand for, which is evilness mm -hmm. after this, mm -hmm. after seeing some of the things that I, I like, we all saw him and witnessed him do. And now you take away your credibility. I don't believe nothing that comes out of your mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't. I got to believe everybody who said everything about you because you told us nothing was true. You volunteered false information to me. Yeah. So now you leave it up to me to decide what I think is true. And now, nigga, I think you did everything that they say about you. Fuck you. <laughs> now what, right? And honestly, on the flip side of this, I'm very happy that all of this deviant culture in the, in the entertainment industry is being exposed. Yeah. Real talk. Like, over the years, again, we, our introduction to hip hop here was probably Bad Boys, et cetera. And whoever you're, whoever's listening now, I'm sure is different for you, right? But over the years, and just in entertainment, because I don't want to just place that on hip hop and rap, there is just so much deviant evil sexual energy yeah. it's like a in it's like a dark world yeah, yeah it is yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. fucking dark the you, guy that these niggas like, be talking about ain't the guy that i'm talking about it can't be the nah, guy that nah, these nah, niggas nah, get nah, on nah, these yeah. award nah, shows and say yo nah. thank you god thank you yeah. Yeah. we ain't we it's ain't talking about the same guy. different world you mean like, the homie i see on sunday it couldn't be him we, we ain't talking about the same no, guy the not guy my god no my god the guy that these niggas worship be doing all the bullshit and you know the difference between their god and the god that i believe in they have an expiration date. Your yeah. time is going to come. Yeah. So you could praise him in a moment. You could give him all whatever the glory. And you could try to manipulate and do all that shit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the darkness is always going to see the light. That's a fact. Yeah. And it's I always going to see the light. And I think about like the children in this, uh, <laughs> Talk to in this place, man. Right? Like mm -hmm. I just saw a picture of both his twin daughters. Going Beautiful. To prom. Right, Reggie? And they look yeah, stunning. That. Now, the memory of their prom is going to be attached to a very this. illicit, violent video. Fuck their prom, that, their life, Alex. No, I know. I was going to get that. I know, yeah, but I'm just, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking I'm like, like, I'm worried, I'm worried. I'm, I'm, worried. Worried. I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm just I'm like, damn. the prom, no, nigga, like, sure. look what you did to yeah. your but legacy. Again, but again, prom are one of those like earlier fun moments yeah. Yeah. for children. It's right? important. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like we're talking about our, our memories and hip hop and stuff, right? Like this is, as a child, like mm -hmm. I remember my prom. I remember getting ready. I remember getting fly. Now they're going to remember all of the fake smiles because mm -hmm. it literally happened on. I think the day yeah. before or the day of their prom literally yeah. like day before day after and yeah. you sit here and you go man to put your kids through this is to have your your son 
Cause I, yo, I, I listened to the uh, the diss track again, even though y- you and Mandy was making fun of you that shit. Justin Combs, yeah, King Combs, the no, King, Combs, King Combs, King Combs, the King Combs diss track, yeah, yeah. Diddy's voice is on there. He's ad libbing. He's even talking a little bit. Yeah, he's, really? yeah, he's ad libbing on that song. He's really? Like, Get him. Like he, you, if you oh listen to that song, goodness. if you listen to that song again, he's kind of amping him on. So it's like, man, bag, oh my stay god, in your bag. yo, to put your Get son your on the bag, stay, stay in your, your bag. bag. Too many phrases. He was staying in his bag, all right. Too many phrases. I'm gonna stop saying phrases. Niggas with phrases scare me now. You know I'm saying, but nah, real wow. shit. And you know, again, you put your son on that platter. Your daughters who are so, like, imagine... Innocent, like... So innocent. Imagine yeah. their friend groups. Yeah. Imagine their mom yeah. groups. Like, Because yeah. everyone knows what's going on. Like, yeah. everybody... You ever walk past somebody and you can hear them talking about you? For sure. I can't imagine. Yeah. I'm sure that's what all of them have to go through, yeah. right? Or, or when you show up, the conversation just stops. Yeah, and you be like, hey, what was what was y'all yeah. talking about? Yeah. Oh, nothing, your pops. Yeah. Like, And it's crazy the because their ki- his, uh, Diddy's kids, they all, like... F- one thousand, thousand, thousand percent. They admire Diddy. They think he's like the best man it's ever Diddy. to exist. Diddy like, was see. the barometer yeah. for black excellence. See. Diddy had us drinking vodka as a community. Black <laughs> niggas don't drink vodka. We don't, we don't drink vodka. <laughs> yeah. This Never. motherfucker has Ciroc yeah. summers. He lined it up for George. You Clooney. get what I'm saying? Like yeah. he lined it up. For he, the, yep. the, the, the influence that. Mm-hmm. We had for him as a culture, as a community, yeah. that he was able to build his empire off of. Because you know what? When he did these partnerships, mm-hmm. he knew if I put my name on it, they gonna follow. Mm-hmm. They 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 gonna follow. They always follow. I'm Diddy. I'm me. I'm Puffy, nigga. You Tell know how, you know how arrogant you gotta be to change your name eighteen times. Yo, niggas, yeah. it's still it's you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It makes like, you think about everything. It every, makes you every think rebrand. about everything. You know what else it made me yeah. think about? It made me think about Kanye West. It made me think about how Kanye said everything that he said on these stages, in these interviews, the leaked text messages Called between him, him and Diddy. Diddy being a Fed, right? <laughs> Makes now, so much sense. I don't know. We can't prove that Diddy is a Fed, but what I can say about Diddy is he's well protected. And when you're Makes well protected, so you normally have people that are in higher places, that are government based, official, whatever the case you want to say, that are affiliated, that can protect you when you do shit like this. It sounds very familiar it to may- uh, Epstein. In terms of hip hop's Epstein, because Epstein, yep. it was alleged that Epstein had a lot of video footage, damning video footage of like all the higher ups, all the suits, mm-hmm. people, uh, and politics, so on and so forth. And it was, it's also being alleged that Diddy also had the same. So I could only think that if that is true, then those people also are incentivized to basically shut the fuck up, because yeah. then like a bunch of stuff will come out with them. But with Sorry. that, with that power and influence, and 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 this is one of the things that you always have to be delicate with, because as aspirational as I try to be, as as many things as you know, you want to achieve these things, and mm-hmm. and I believe in just doing the work. And sometimes when you're great at doing the work, it's gonna come with perks. Yeah, you're gonna go to the bar, and somebody's gonna be a fan and say, "Hey, yo, you want to have a drink?" Right, like right. being great comes with certain perks. That's just the the gift of like there's gifts and curse. That's one of the gifts. Yeah. Right. But also understanding your influence is another thing, and abusing that influence is something that he's clearly has done for a very long time. Because when I listen to this interview, and I think everybody should go t- uh, check out Tasha K's interview with Gina. Uh, her name, I think it's Virginia, but it, it's Gina Hyun, whatever yeah. it, is on her Instagram. We'll actually place that in the bio. It's very sad, though. It, you should definitely listen to it because yeah. she details her encounters with Diddy, yeah. how allegedly, or, or not, not even allegedly, this is out of her mouth, he pressured her to get abortions. Yeah. Um, he was abusive physically, uh, mentally, emotionally, all of those kind of things. He was dating her and Cassie at the same time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, it, it was just a very toxic environment. And for him to prey on these type of women who were vulnerable in this space, I think is just disgusting. Yeah. And I sure. think Charlemagne gave him donkey of the day. I want to give him donkey of the decade. Hey, mm-hmm. donkey of the fucking decade nah, I, because you flush your legacy down the baby. toilet. You get what I'm saying? 30, 30 plus years of quote unquote black excellence, right? Yeah, like why he got PR for nigga? We, you you ain't selling <laughs> shit, homie. It, it, it's I don't over. know if he know that or not. <laughs> and, and I'm I'm glad Charlemagne <laughs> yeah. like said it too, right? Right. And gave him donkey today because when everything first came out, I understand like you know the juxtaposition, uh, I heart. And uh, Power 105, but it just kind of seemed like eerily that a lot of people in the, in the industry didn't even want to touch the whole situation with a 10-foot pole. 
Mm-hmm. So the yeah. fact that Charlemagne actually, you know, gave his uh, his um, uh, example and gave his uh, his two cents on kind of the whole thing, I was like, okay, finally somebody's like starting yeah, to finally. speak up from the in, more or less the inside. And I want to say one of the reasons why is what I said a little bit earlier in this episode. There are people like Amanda Seals who just who lie. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. So. <laughs> There is a balance, and and that's one of the things we're gonna talk about. Terrence Howard a little bit later. <laughs> Shout out to Terrence Howard. I think he may Legend. be the smartest nigga in the universe, or the dumbest. I don't know yet. We'll talk about it. Smartest genius. One of the things he said during his interview with Joe Rogan is balance, and that's something I believe in. Like I have a scale tattooed on my body because I believe that the, the balance is the ultimate key to life. Right? There, mm-hmm. there always has to be a balance. If I love the party, I need to equally love to work. Yeah. I need to equally love to relax. I need to equally learn to like make those things coexist so a balance is always needed yeah. right you get what i'm saying so even with the accusations one of the things that allow or, or preference the culture to kind of be reserved on how they feel is because there are people like the amanda seals of the world who will just lie <laughs> on a person for whatever reason but when we do get this concrete evidence when we do see this it's like all right let's take it let's uh, analyze it. Let's give our thoughts on it. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's like, all right, everything that you built, cool, great, thank you. Get the fuck out of here. It, it's over. Yeah. It's over. Nah, it's over. It's true. I'm gonna lose friends over anybody who defends this nigga yeah, in another video. I'm just, I'm just I gotta, curious. You get know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I can't even fuck with you. No, it's, like, it's I'm disgusting. curious. Do you guys like see anybody yeah. slightly defending him? Like, because yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if my timeline is just. Well, I, I don't know, but I, I I can't imagine somebody like seeing a tweet right now of somebody defending him. Like, does that exist? Yeah, I've seen, I've heard somebody say, "Hey, like you don't know what Cassie was doing that made him like called in on a radio station." Blaming, and said, like yeah, whatever, yeah. like I, the oldest thing in the book. What I have seen is uh people who are very spiritual, uh acknowledging uh Puff's wrongdoings. While also trying forgiveness? to forgiveness, not for I don't think it's forgiveness. Like skate around the issue, N- not skate around, but I see I see them trying to say because they are so spiritual that he has to get through it, whatever that means. So to someone watching that or looking at that, you know, okay. if you don't completely align with that sort of thinking, you could probably assume like, oh, okay, yo, they they want to see did he, did he do well? But I do see a lot of spiritual folks saying like that was wrong, and he ha- he needs to go in and do the proper healing and the proper work. So again, someone can interpret that as that's what he needs to focus yeah. on. Yeah, which is the truth. Just focus on you. Yeah. Focus on you and your relationship with your kids. And you know, hopefully, I don't. I don't know many people in 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 his position. He's one of one, yeah. right? There, there is no case study for a situation mm-hmm. like this. We we've we've never seen somebody of this magnitude, somebody of this influence, somebody of this this monetary stature yeah. be in this position, right? Like we talk about R. Kelly. R. Kelly. From what they're saying, he went bankrupt. He's we've never looked at R. Kelly like a mogul. We've looked at him. Maybe he's talented. Of course, he's talented. Mm-hmm. He got songs. He got music. He got influence. Nasty. But we've never credited him as a mogul. Not a mogul, but people will be like, "Oh, he's one of the greatest artists of all time." But definitely not like artists. mogul business, like influence. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Diddy is one of one. Yeah. I, I, we don't. We we've never as seen this as a as a person <laughs> as of now. Yeah. And and. What you do when you do stuff like this is you open Pandora's box. Mm-hmm. And now everybody next to you is going to be evaluated a little bit differently. Mm-hmm. King everybody, Los. everybody. King Los, I saw you in that video, bro. Yeah. Wait, what video? <laughs> hey, there's a video that came out probably like two days after um, Diddy put out his apology. Quote, I'm doing that with air quotations mm-hmm. on Instagram. And for those of you who don't know, King Los is a really gifted talented rapper i also do think he signed a bad boy i, I do know diddy he's probably ghost for diddy over the years etc mm-hmm. long story short diddy was uh found by the paparazzi walking down the block oh and yeah. king los next to him and i i implore y'all to go watch this video yeah. the moment king los sees that paparazzi Try that. see that he is with diddy yeah he start turning. He start he turning backwards. around, looking back, like ain't, ain't nowhere to go, Los. Yeah, there was three people with him. It was three. Hey, Sorry, Los, two people. Look straight. Three total. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. ain't nowhere to go. But again, also I've seen people on the post that he's posted about. Yo, you know, Tom will heal all and all of that. There are yeah. a lot of prominent celebrities underneath those comments expressing their support. So, yeah. question for yeah. you. Yeah. So, um, Stevie J, uh, I think uh, he's a weirdo. CNN was it CNN? Yeah, been weird. There was a. Uh, news are a news video. I mm-hmm. think it was CNN. Mm-hmm. Um, came out with like you know pe- showing people that were kind of sticking up for Diddy, and um, Stevie J was one of those people. Oh, that's um, for sure. 
in the interview. My question to you guys is, what do you think? Like, how how should we perceive that? How is that supposed to be seen now that like everything's you know out in the open? What you mean, like? Ev- like from Stevie J's point of view, like since you were kind of, he should shut the fuck up. Yeah, everybody. Because what I think, like, with with this situation, there's a lot of unknowns. Yeah, right. So Stevie J could have been around Diddy, and Diddy may have never showed that side to Stevie J. He he may not know, but he may have an inkling. He may have heard, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you watch Love and Hip Hop, that, that's I why. Didn't, that's I didn't why watch I asked. Stevie J is a part of the Creep Squad. Yeah. Oh my okay. gosh. The title, the title. That's what they call themselves. That's what they call themselves. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah. It was him. Uh, was it Peter Guns in it? Uh, no, no, no. Peter Guns was in New York. Okay, but that's uh, ATL. So it was him. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if Scrappy was in it. I don't yeah. think Scrappy was in it. But yeah, I, th- I think you're right, you're referencing the New York Love and Hip Hop New York. But... Yeah, when Stevie G do his lips like this, yeah, all that freak <laughs> shit. Nah, I, I believe it for yeah. sure. For sure. I mean, I could see why some people blindly did always support Diddy. Like his kids, like they never saw that side of him. But people like Stevie J, they see it now. Mm-hmm. So to see that come out and then defend him afterwards is just like inexcusable. Like why? I'm, like what? What is going on? Nah, I'm glad yeah. I have a dad. You know what I'm saying? Oh my god! Nah, nah, cause yo, what if that was Damn. my hero? <laughs> Damn. And then you find out like he's been doing all this. Like <laughs> what? Do, what the fuck are these kids gonna like? That's what I'm saying. How, right? What are they thinking right now? Like, Even if Diddy did such a good job talking to him, like oh. It's bullshit, y'all. It's nonsense. The I was thinking about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, even if he did such a good job of just masking that from his he kids. He definitely did. Right? Like, Gina, was, yeah. Gina, in her interview with Tasha K, uh, Tasha asked her, like, yo, had he ever done this in front of his kids? Right. Her answer was no. He would never allow his kids to see yeah. him like that. But he would do it in front of my daughter. He's mm. done it in front oh of my, my daughter. Oh, my god. And my daughter would call him Poppy. And she asked me, Poppy. hey, did Poppy hit you? Oh, wow, that's did, it. Did Poppy hit you? Get a rights to bad boy to you catch him. That's it. Again, and all of this is documented. All, yeah. all of this is documented. All of this is in that interview. I think the interview is about four or five years old. It's mm. on Tasha K's um, YouTube channel. But I watched all three parts of that interview. Yeah, was, and I saw how sad. the lack of media training that that woman had, I think at that time in her life, again, from what I've seen, they've <laughs> reconciled since that interview. But at that particular moment, that was somebody who was scared, who was vulnerable, who was yeah. preyed upon, who felt like she needed to say something, to be heard, to be felt, to to implore, to give strength to other women because she felt like she was a victim and she was a victim. Yeah. And she almost cried at certain points in the interview. Yep. She said certain things that we've heard and some things that we haven't heard. And at that time, again, when you're so powerful, when you're able to get things thrown under the rug and you're, you are Diddy. Again, the name, the, Diddy is a verb. In yeah, our culture. For sure. You get what I'm saying? Diddy it's not Bob. just a person. Diddy is a lifestyle. Puffy is a lifestyle. So it's hard to go up against somebody. Now, again, talking about his ex, Gina, who, again, he was dating while he was with Cassie. Mm-hmm. This is a girl who moved from Vegas that lived in Nebraska. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So moved out the sticks. Everything <laughs> that she ever wanted was yep. somebody in the Diddy. Absolutely. So if I'm going to. Fun your lifestyle. Mm-hmm. What what choice are you really leaving me when I'm that young, yeah. impressionable, vulnerable? Mm-hmm. And again, I, I don't know what she was into because I see a lot of people talking about, oh yeah, Cassie was a freak too, and she was this and she was stupid. that. And so I mean, she was stupid. forced. Regardless like, of so what stupid. her interest is, <laughs> there's so a way stupid. to be a consensual freak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, like, I don't understand when <laughs> when niggas start talking like that to that me. I'm so like, bro, stupid. it doesn't. None of that matters. Yeah. People forget it's not that. the time for that. People like. forget that Diddy poached Cassie off of Ryan Leslie. Yeah, and in that interview, <laughs> he didn't even mention Ryan Le- Ryan Leslie at the table. <laughs> it was like a video of them of Diddy basically introducing Cassie uh, to the board. It seemed like, and then uh, Cassie was sitting right next to Ryan Le- Leslie, and Diddy did not mention Ryan Leslie. <laughs> so again, the relationship between Cassie and Diddy has probably always been a relationship of one in power and one listening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to call her a freak or oh she was down with it too, what choice did she have to what what choice did yeah. she have, brother? And, anyway, they on Twitter. It was twi- sickening. They it was, was sickening. They on Twitter, <laughs> they on Twitter saying uh turn him into a eunuch. Castrate him. Castrate him. <laughs> one ball. One ball, no ball. No ball. You watch Game of Thrones. You remember, you remember the unit going in? Yeah, the ball nigga. Yeah, you know the one. <laughs> Cut his dick off. Yeah, you know the one. See Damn. how they do us? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, they got to do you like Yeah, because like, what can happen? Because he's not, oh, but there, there's like <laughs> further, investigation. further investigation. Okay, because yeah. I was like, That's once the lawsuit really. ended, I was like, he's not going to go to jail, but now yeah. there's there's pending, never mind. Right, never mind. like LA, LA County. so much, and that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. There's Kim Porter's passing that have a lot of speculation around that. Again, people are speculating that the fact that why is a rich black woman 
passing away from pneumonia. Pneumonia. Mm -hmm. In her 40s. Mm -hmm. I think that's a valid question. There's so much. And, <laughs> and, and honestly, I feel bad for his children, like Reggie said. And I know we, we spent quite some time on this, but I feel like there's so many different components to the story that maybe other people aren't touching. Yeah. But think about, like you said, you, <laughs> you, you just thank God for not having a father. Thank God. What no. if that nigga was supposed to be my hero? Nice. Oh my God! What I'm gonna do? How I'm gonna bounce true. back? That I would have been destroyed. Like, it's like it's very I bounce back. for me as someone who like I'm obsessed with my dad. Like yeah. it is very hard Same. to like I, as an adult. Um, I've, I'm very good at this now, seeing him as like a human being who makes mistakes, all that. But growing up, like he was such a great dad that I saw nothing but a great dad. So Diddy's kids, they see nothing but a great dad. So it's very hard to accept anything else. Right. Like what can he? What, what wrong could he possibly do? Right. But this. Now they have to just really like accept this. I can't imagine what that feels like. Cause me, like even just seeing the mistakes some, my dad has made, that was hard for me. But this, I can't imagine on this scale, imagine. like how, like psychologically, I don't know what, like I don't know how they, I don't know. They have I don't to know, like <laughs> publicly disassociate themselves with their father. Yeah, You're that's crazy publicly. because that's their dad. Public, like, that's what I'm, yeah, publicly they have to disassociate themselves. Well. disassociate themselves with their father yeah or privately they have to have some real nigga conversation for sure that they may not be able to because again somebody who who has a father and i'm I'm blessed where my dad he keep it 100 with me right i know his flaws i know his shortcomings i know i know all that you get what i'm saying like we have that convert we have those conversations yeah mm -hmm. there's nothing anybody could tell me about my father where i'm like eh, eh, i don't you know what i'm saying like you've talked to him there's about a it. certain yeah. dynamic that they should have created amongst themselves even if you want to lie to the public don't have your son out here making diss tracks on your behalf like, knowing you did what you crazy. did yeah like crazy you know living on the song at living on the song <laughs> crazy like you it, it's just no way so i heard a lot of people say this about diddy it's over the business the 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 fame the fame is not gonna go nowhere so because you're always gonna be famous you're always gonna be synonymous with some of the bullshit that you did the evil that you did also it's not over as far as the things that'll be revealed about who you are and not what you've done yeah. not at all those things that continue to come out I have breaking news on to, uh, now that you mentioned that um so uh spiritual word just confirmed that Fifty Cent's multi-part documentary about Diddy's uh, report uh, about Diddy has been reportedly sold to Netflix after a bidding war between like a bunch of different. Holy he was serious. Shit. Yeah, yeah, I thought he was joking. Oh the the God. Diddy do it documentary. Did he do it? Did he not? Oh Yo, God. wait. Okay, I have a question. Like, <laughs> like Fifty Cent is crazy, but like he's been one of the biggest like vocal people about this Diddy saga. Like everything mm -hmm. that happens, he's on it. Like he's mm -hmm. commenting. But is there is there nothing that Fifty Cent has done that he's worried about coming out, or is, do you think he's like? That's a good question. I don't I mean, know. We, the thing like, is, we don't know. We've heard things like I, I recently Fifty Cent. He actually, um, I want to say he sued his ex, his his baby mom, for saying that she alleged that he raped her mm -hmm. and abused her. Right? Like we don't know. Now, when people settle in that way, and I heard somebody, I do want to shout out Maul, because Maul said this on his podcast. If I'm being accused of something and somebody says, yo, you did X, Y, and Z to me, and I know I didn't do it, I'm not going to settle. Yeah. Because the, the person that I am, I know that I've done, you're not going to get it. I would rather spend every dollar that I have mm -hmm. to my name fighting yeah. for my name yep. opposed to settling with you, right? That's a given, yeah. So... In regards to 50 Cent, she said whatever, she claimed whatever she did about 50, but 50 said, I'm going to sue you for saying this. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get what I'm saying? I, and, and I don't know. That's the thing with these celebrities and with these people in this industry. We really don't know until we know, mm -hmm. but I think there are hints. Mm -hmm. And a hint to all of us as a culture, we say, God damn, that nigga did he settle fast as shit. Mm -hmm. How the fuck you settled 30 plus whatever X amount of realize, undisclosed yeah. amount the next day? Yeah. That raised flags. Yeah. But again, we didn't have the proof. So we just had to use context clues. We had to use how we felt about it. And again, salute and roaring them all because they were one of the first people to actually sit there and say, wait, hold up. Him settling so quick, that's fishy. That's weird. Fuck that. You can't get money out of me if I know I didn't do this. Um, and, and I agree with that stance, right? Like, yeah. I'm going to fight for my name. I know what I did. I know what I haven't done. Right. So I, I get that. That's immediately what I thought when that 
when the lawsuit was settled like 24 hours later, I was like, see, he did that shit. Like, he does not want this to go anywhere. But then so, what really like irked my soul so much was that like when that happened, I remember the thing that people were saying the most was like, see, all Cassie wanted was money. Like, I yeah, remember, don't, like, don't, people, like, everyone was saying that, that on the timeline, and I was, <laughs> I was yeah. so I was mad, frustrated, because I was like, yeah, yeah. it's not about money, I swear, like, she just wants to start a movement, this, this and is, now look. This isn't a topic to be yeah. service about. This is very, very layered on every front, on why he got arrested, on how long he's been doing this, like, this is very, yeah. very layered, this is not new. Reggie, right? I hate to do this to you, but I have to. You actually had a chance to interview Diddy, really quick, and Literally just in that a moment. a few weeks before this all happened. Like, Crazy. So yeah. in that moment of you interviewing Diddy, like what was the energy like? And I ask you this because I do want to transition to Cam because people were asking <laughs> Cam on about certain it. things. So hopefully yeah, you, don't, you don't give me the killer. <laughs> you don't give me the killer answer. <laughs> but you know, just being around Diddy right before this kind of news happened, like what I was think, that like for you? I literally, I think we definitely, we spoke about it on the podcast because I was so happy. Like I was like, wow, this is such a big moment in my career. Like I got a Diddy interview. I met him, got a picture with him, talked about his album that I loved, the yeah, Love album. Like, love that album. And I think on our episode, I said like yo like he's so like just loving like calm he really looked each of us in the eye and like answered our questions just talked about like what he wants to do like like love spreading like good energy spreading good art like it was a great day like i genuinely was like wow this is amazing like he seems more at peace he made this album like on an island invited so many like up-and-coming artists and I, I just I just did it. I don't regret like, you know, posting a picture. I don't regret being proud of that interview because I did not know at the time. Mm -hmm. And then literally a month later, everything came crashing down. But yeah, yeah that's my honest opinion. I had no fucking idea. Like I of literally course. I, I mean, was, of course. I'm not I didn't no, ask no, you no, that no, to like yeah, put yeah. you in. No, no, just yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. and then like yeah. in the interview, like he was sitting on the floor. We were in like a big like auditorium. He was sitting on the floor talking to us like casually. Like I was like, wow. Like he's so great, and now fucking look, like it's so crazy. it's crazy how life comes at you, isn't but, it? Before we yeah. pivot to Gam, and that's crazy. Like yo, I remember you coming in about like yo, because we were asking like, how was his energy like? What was this? And you're like, nah, it was cool. Yeah, he was cool. Like before we pivot to Gam, um, I just want to say this real quick, and I'm sure Savon agrees with me. Y'all wrong is wrong all the time, regardless of your successes, regardless of your accolades. Again, earlier I mentioned how I feel like some people's fandom kind of gets in the way of their vision and their clarity, especially on very severe and serious matters. Mm -hmm. So trust me, y'all, this is not the hell y'all got to die on to defend. Mm -hmm. uh, to the especially 50 point, man. especially as a man, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm here, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. If everything is on the up and up with 50, I do like to see another prominent man in our space speak out against it so much so that he's willing to divulge into the, the intricacies of the story. There's a so, lot of people that's quiet. Yeah. A lot of people that's quiet. There's a lot of but people why, that's quiet. Though? This is this is ain't no time to There's be quiet. A lot of people that quiet. You don't gotta be quiet about this. You don't gotta be quiet about this because you don't want to draw attention to yourself. That's true. That's, 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 that's and why we don't, quiet. And, that's true. Yeah, yeah. and we don't we that's don't true. know what anybody does. That's true. But that's the reason that I believe some people are quiet. Mm -hmm. Like that's true. Or or you feel ashamed for supporting somebody so loudly, right? Like a Meek Mill. Right. Like I ain't heard from Meek. Yeah. Me. At the time of this recording, we haven't heard from Amika. Where you Mill, at? Some of Diddy's counterparts. Like, mm -hmm. I do remember the FOMO that I felt at the Rock Nation brunches, <laughs> seeing the toast <laughs> yeah. amongst so many different celebrities. And again, going back to those two words, black excellence, I was just right? About to say that, yeah. There was a personification amongst us, like, oh, this is what you need to do. This is where you need to go. This is where you can get if you sacrifice, you know, hard work and, yeah. and discipline and, and and just talent and all of those things that they have, right? You can't take away somebody's work ethic or talent or whatever, but you use your superpowers for evil. Mm. You use everything that you've known and taught and learned and acquired over the years for evil. Because again, I'm just going based off of what Cassie's lawsuits, everything in Cassie's is it's true to me. It even details she, that video. That she yeah. she spoke about that exact video, the hotel video yeah. in her lawsuit. And how could yeah. she predict that that was going to come out? Yeah, exactly. Unless hopefully I mean, it exists. Because she, she, she happened. experienced it. Yeah. Uh, but out of all the scenarios that mm -hmm. she could have named, right? Yeah. <laughs> out of everything that she could have named, everything. Because we all the first thing that I thought is, oh, if this happened here, imagine what it happened behind closed doors, right? Yeah. A lot of us like, thought that. Absolutely. I, so wow. for everything absolutely. that that woman may have endured, yeah. For that to be the one that she put in that public statement and for that video footage evidence to come out, mm -hmm. it just says, oh, you thought you were just hiding in plain sight. 
Like, I also want to send my condolences, and I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm dead ass. Oh, but I really thought about this. What happened? Here we go. The niggas in the freak offs. <laughs> Nah, but but why? But Wait, why? why but why you got condolences for them? Did they die? Because they wasn't really <laughs> feeling it like that. Like they didn't really want to do that. Like, oh yeah, that was absolutely, absolutely abusive absolutely as well. Abusive. That's what I'm saying. It was forced yeah, and abusive. Yeah, yeah. So you gotta. But, hey, not for nothing, man. Cat Williams said it. You gotta yeah. leave. You gotta know when to say no. Because Diddy won the part. Yo, it's crazy. Yes, like, I know people that went to Diddy parties. I know. Me too. Me, me, me too. too. Yeah, like, yo. Damn. Me fucking too. I remember yeah. I used to feel like, yeah. damn, shorty at Diddy party. Like, I gotta get my life up. Like, damn. But now I'm happy as Thank fuck. God. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Like, Thank think God. about what he did. Like, yeah. free calls Absolutely. used to really be a term of yeah. endearment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not, uh, well, wait, to wait, who? Wait. Depending on who's asking. Not for, not for me. What? Not for me. In the 90s, they used to call freak offs. <laughs> yo, you freaking. Freak offs is like consensual. And that's the problem, yo. That, like, you changed the, the verbiage. Like, I want everybody to party. I want everybody to have a good time, right? But there's this. FOMO culture, mm -hmm. like in, in our space, that's so fucking weird. It, it makes you do shit that it's, you don't want to do. Yeah, like bro, guys, just just it's, fucking think for yourself. Like, like real talk, I'll say I'm so glad we have our souls on yeah. this podcast. We, shit. Yeah, Beautiful. all three of us. Because yeah. we can make decisions. Right, we can make including. I was about to say, damn, I ain't got a no. soul. I said, no, 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 no. Nah, I'm Pierre, joking, I'm joking. Pierre, so you got the super soul. Super <laughs> he soul. Does. Super soul Sunday on that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't play with him in the word. Yeah. Right, yes, but I'm glad that we have that because there are some people in this space that aren't able to really understand okay maybe i shouldn't go to that or maybe yeah. i shouldn't be a part of that yeah. they're always just so blinded by oh oh i love that nigga music oh i'm with someone so and it's like yo bro you fucking fan you freaky ass nigga <laughs> your, freaky fandom, ass your fandom <laughs> is gonna get you caught up in some shit that you can't explain later yeah. we just mentioned meek mill mm. <laughs> so again i i'm glad that all of this is being exposed there is a way and i'm and i'm confident in it for these industries to be prominent and important, but without all of this deviant, nasty, evil, sexual culture. Like, I've been told niggas, I'm not a freak no more. He don't want to be a you freak no more. You literally said that a year no, ago, yes. He don't want to be no a freak more, no more. No more no freak more. bull. No freak I, bull. I'm not, I do, I do missionary. <laughs> Only. <laughs> Only. Ma, That's if you're looking for something else from me, come I'm in. sorry. Come in. I, <laughs> oh, I got something. He might have, I'm not just doing missionary. I'm doing missionary. Come on, dog. No, like no, this no. Mad shit. You I could, am not you a freak. Flip it. You could turn. And I'm wearing it with like a badge. <laughs> Real that's talk. Hip and that's hop. That, hip -hop. And, okay, put it, put it together. You see what you get. Okay, but real talk, man. And and you see that amongst our peers. And I be looking at some of these niggas like you're a fiend, and you yeah. freaky ass nigga. I've always you yeah, get caught I, up. I love this like sentiment because I've Dog. never been a FOMO ass bitch. Ever. I love staying Ever. home. And when I see, I knew like. FOMO really does get you in trouble. It but does. Like, it's, it's, really, can. it's really the it look. Can. And 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 that's one of the things I'm proud yeah. of. Like, yeah. we don't really just do things for the look. Right. And and trying to be on the scene. No. You know what I'm saying? Like no. a lot of people get caught up in this lifestyle in this industry because, oh my God, the allure of it. Or I get to stand next to X who's standing next to X who can get me to, to X. X. You know right. what I'm saying? Like exactly. They, yeah. they, because <laughs> A lot of people don't realize, I'm going back to a few episodes ago, I know y'all killed me for this, this quote when I told Shorty, yo, go fuck Drake. I'm right? still killing you for kill that. Y'all killed me for that. I get it. <laughs> but my sentiment- Even in, after the loss? My, my, even <laughs> after the loss. Go f he might need you to fuck him after the L. Yeah, Kendrick. Like, I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> Whatever it is. But when I said that Stupid. to her, I didn't say it like I want yeah. her to go have sex with another man. I mean, what I was saying was, <laughs> we are in such close proximity. What I had meant was, what I had meant was, let me clear it up. Yeah, we are in so whack. close yeah. proximity yeah. to these yeah. powerful men and women yeah. because of social media, mm -hmm. because of our phones, because mm -hmm. of how you look. Like, if I find you attractive. And, and and I feel like I'm a man of substance. I feel like I'm a man of quality, right? And yeah. again, we're industry adjacent. So <laughs> I think anybody that we feel like we may have access to, anybody can have access to. Yes. I have women that I follow right now with 300 followers that Drake follow. Yo. Damn. I, I have you. women right now with 500 followers that the game follows. Let me be the best one. I have, you get them like, and I don't <laughs> even mean to drive snakes, but y'all niggas facts. do it to hey, yourself. Hey, it is what it when they follow with more followers and they got followers? Oh yeah, that's the one. I like that shit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I like a little. Sorry, Reggie. I know you don't know about it. I like a little thirteen hundred. I like a little thirteen hundred. I ain't gonna lie. I do. I do love a good slept on baddie. You know Ooh, that following seven hundred, but only got five hundred followers. But the crazy thing is, they don't be slept on because all of these guys that yeah, we yeah. revere and we listen to their music and turn right. it up to the in, in the club, they all have access to the same people, the Absolutely. same women that we have. I know the nerd from high school who got. 
NBA players and rappers in her DMs right now. She's asking me, who is this nigga and what team does he play for? <laughs> and I got to break it down. Like, nah, shorty, I put him on my parlay last week. He just he just got yeah. the over for me. He got the over for me, so he good. You know what I'm saying? You She's telling him. me, oh, nah, he got a wife and kids. And I'm like, damn, I had no idea what Crazy. he does in his personal life. But on the court, or on the field, or in the booth, I know what he's capable of. Yeah. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So that's the whole sentiment behind, yo, shorty, you could go fuck Drake. Not that I want nobody to like, <laughs> but you can if you wanted to. And the same applies if to If you're Diddy. my girl, you can't fuck Drake. <laughs> my fault. That's not your girl. You're right. We're on the same page. Never mind. Uh, yeah, hey, do what you want with your body. It's a free world. Yeah. yeah so long yeah. as it's consensual. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. But ultimately, again, I feel yeah. like we've exhausted this conversation. Hopefully, we don't have to talk about this man anymore. Oh, no, no. This is part uh, one. This, this is, is just part been one. a lot of like, this is part one. like just dark energy yeah. around the rapper, like from Drake getting pedophile accusations, mm -hmm. Kendrick Lamar having domestic uh, abuse about, uh, allegations, allegations mm -hmm. and then Diddy this, like it's just been a lot of darkness, yeah. guys. Think like, about it. Diddy hasn't even been charged from whatever they raided his house over. I'm yeah. sure this is act one and uh, we well, will- Kanye you told y'all he a fed. He did say it. Kanye said a lot of things. Hey. And, 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 and I think it. at some point we're going to apologize to Kanye. Hey, I want to apologize oh, to Kanye right now. Okay. You want to know why? Why? Because I, of all people, should know crazy niggas say truth. <laughs> Where I'm from, the crazy crackhead niggas. They be right. Seen a lot of things. <laughs> hey, don't, don't go down over there. Whatever, crackhead. <laughs> go down over there. It was a pothole. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's what you meant. But again, when people like are, we should have just listened. Just, but it'd be like, hard to kind of listen when yeah, it's, it's his not delivery. Everything, not everything Kanye delivery. says is good. So. Exactly, and when you know that, it's just so hard to really digest like the real truth. Like uh, Orlando, Orlando Brown. Yeah, he another crazy truth telling motherfucker. A school got got about that. That's what he said. Diddy gave him right. Ushkash bash my ushkash. That nigga bash my. That nigga normal. <laughs> he playing around. I know that nigga normal. A ooshkosh? I know that nigga normal. But you got a ooshkosh. No, you don't. <laughs> You've gotten it before. Huh? You never got the ooshkosh by the boop. By Diddy? Nah, 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 not by No, Diddy. not by Diddy. Oh, by Diddy. <laughs> In life, the ooshkosh by the boop. The ooshkosh by the boop. Yeah. I had that shit. I had the bob boom. Yeah. I with that. But yeah, man. Again, prayers to anybody that's a victim. Again, Diddy, you got what's coming to you. I know there's a lot of people. Um, who feel this way mm -hmm. and and <laughs> I hate to be that person but sometimes when there's smoke there's fire mm -hmm. when you do bad business when artists are accusing you of fucking them out of their publishing uh, when you're <sighs> accused of stealing when you're accused of abuse like at some point you just had to know and maybe it's a God complex and I hope my ego never gets that inflated to where I feel like I'm above the law I'm above human decency yeah. I'm above anything mm, in life Lord. right like yeah. I don't want that amount of money Right. No, I don't. There's a quote where Jim Carrey, my guy, he says, I wish everybody was able to get everything that they ever wanted because then, you know, it would allow you to make the decisions to your human nature. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't want that. Type we do a of lot money. of things out of survival. I don't want that type of access. Yeah. I want to stay grounded. I want to stay in perspective. And that doesn't mean perfection. Like, I do also want to be clear. Yeah. Like, Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Everybody mm -hmm. has, you know, done things that whatever they may not be happy with, proud of. It's like, yeah. damn, whatever, fuck it. But I think there's course correction. I For think sure. there's acknowledgement. And I also think there's a lack of manipulating, yeah. right? And I think what Diddy did on on his display, this case in particular, is just disgusting and is disingenuous. Yeah. And again, he's one of the few pillars that we had in black culture and the black entertainment space and black history, so to speak, where you had so much weight on your shoulders. You should have just shut the fuck up. You should have apologized before this came out. You should have been remorseful remorseful before you lost your empire. Mm -hmm. There's just so many different mm -hmm. ways that he could have went about this where it's just disheartening to somebody yeah. who lives and, and, and was blessed with the opportunity through hip hop. Yeah. And too, if like you got to allow people who you, whom, that, whom you love to speak into your life. Mm -hmm. Like you can't be the only person in your world who by the turn of a hat, whatever you says goes. Like, there's no room. Whenever something like that happens, if it's just like, like you, no one could tell you anything, and that's yeah. a very dangerous place to be.
What's going on, Need to Know family? Thank you so much for tuning into this episode, but we need to take a little break to give a shout out at our good friends at Underdog Fantasy. With a 50% deposit match of up to $500 using code Need to Know. That means new users can deposit up to $500 for up to $250 in bonus cash. Yep. So like Alex said, if you want to deposit $10, that means you'll have a $5 bonus bet to play with. If you want to play a little bit higher than that, let's say $500, you get $250. So like Alex, like Reggie said, use the code need to know on Underdog Fantasy. Press pause. Make sure y'all download the app right now to get that bonus and get into the episode. Let's get it, y'all. Ke Keeping it in the vein of people telling the truth. Um, y'all saw Cam. Yeah. Okay, yeah. transition. Yeah. Shout out to Killer, <laughs> man. We we was talking about Orlando Brown, Ooh, gosh, bab to beat, bab, bab it up. Let's go uptown. <laughs> Killer. <laughs> y'all see seen Cam on. He did it us is bad. What it is. He did us bad. I got one, you got I got one question. <laughs> was Pastor Mace busy? They didn't know. <laughs> Did CNN not C know? We, we, CNN. Actually, we actually don't know because we're all, everybody is collectively confused. Like, why did you guys book Cam? Even Cam didn't know why he was booked. So I, I guess there's just a lot of confusion. But he still could have, he still could have done a better job, I think. No, nah, I think he did an uh, amazing job. Let's listen to it. Something known in the industry about how Diddy treated Poor his reporter. artists. It was on CNN, guys. Yeah. Take a shot. Sometimes you gotta take a shot when you're doing a lot of He was nervous too. After this nah, run it back. You spoke over it. You His gotta run it back. Artists. So I'm gonna get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. Um, horsepower joint. I'm just going off what Mace said. Mace took me to Biggie. I don't really know Puff is like Mace, no Puff. So I appreciate what Mace said, and of course, uh, that's my brother. So if he felt that way, then he felt that way. I can't really tell you how Puff moves or anything like that. Mace may know better than me because he was signed to Puff. I wasn't. Right. <laughs> but my show does come on at 8 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. It's called It Is What It Is, and y'all make sure y'all check it out. <laughs> I mean, I might get some more information out of Mace from there, but for me to tell you <laughs> how Puff acting and all that, I don't know. I never was signed to him. Yeah. What about the industry in general? I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do you think that's the case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'd be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that was inviting me to. Yo, who, yo, who booked me for hey, this Hey, yo, who joint? the fuck booked this shit? Like, what's we really doing? Like, what the I love fuck? Cam on live TV. <laughs> I feel like yeah, somebody this isn't the first time. Man, I love Cam shit. on live TV. I, like he doesn't they, give a they fuck. They had to want this. CNN. They they wanted this moment. That's what I'm confused about. That's what <sighs> a little bit of like the conversation has been. It's like okay, so did Cam really not know that he was booked to talk about Diddy? <laughs> did they tell him and he, he still chose to act like this? Like there's a lot of like I, I wonder what exactly happened. Like did he purposely do this? Was he genuinely confused? Like why the fuck did you guys book he, me? He like did, he did Abby Phillips dirt, bro. Like, oh, that's the name of that young lady. Yeah, she's a, she's nah, a great CNN reporter anchor. for CNN. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful woman. Great. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. This is what Jamel Hill says on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So something ain't adding up. I've done CNN hundreds of times, including the Abby show. Before every single appearance, a producer tells me or someone on my team what my segment is about and the types of questions that'll be asked. Uh, if you aren't a regular, the producers typically insist on a pre-interview either with you or someone on your team who relays your talking points. So one, either a producer didn't tell him or his team what kind of question he was going to be asked or two, a producer told him or someone on his team, and he purposely decided to use this opportunity as a publicity stunt. I will say this, man. I ain't mad at no nigga plugging his business anyway. When I heard that, <laughs> I respect it. He was like, by the way, my show, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's pink, even, the, even that yeah, pink, pink horse power. power. Fellas, you you know. You tried you, that shit? Mm-hmm. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. The pink horse? I tried the blue joint, but they I ain't- got blue horse power? Yeah, they got the blue joint. Them niggas from Harlem, yeah, they got some. I got you. <laughs> I didn't but, know that. But yo, I, Alan, yo, I, you, Heisenberg. You yo, me, I got yo, you, bro. This nigga be funny. Yeah, yo, Reggie. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Yo, laughs> I didn't say nothing. Reggie. Reggie was at this appointment. Y'all spoke that. Y'all spoke that. I'm not saying nothing. You said I know. Oh, no, no, no. I know what you know. 
I know. You don't gotta explain. Yeah. I didn't know what you know. I know what you know. Guys, I'm, I'm a virgin. They're not talking, they're not talking about me, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be doing that semen retention. So for sure. I just I just hit some of that horsepower just to see if what, it still works. Where my body would fit. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah, you got the BMW and my, shit. Horsepower, my, you gotta go. Oh. You gotta go full throttle. Nick, wow, my blood was rushing off no, that and shit. He, he said, wow. I'm about to get some cheeks after this on CNN. On CNN. That was but as he should, like, I, yeah, I respect that. Nah, nah, like, nah. Be your authentic self. Nah. Be you at all times. One of the things no. I always tell this story a few years ago, straight out of college, I got an opportunity to work in a very corporate environment. Yeah. I, I didn't want to do that. I turned it down. I turned down a lot of money at that time to like be myself. I didn't, I, I wanted to be able to wear a hat. Alex, you wear sweatpants to your job. I do. That is a luxury. That is a blessing. You <laughs> yeah. don't have to conform to who it is they Bruh. want you to be. So when you ask me on your platform, I'm gonna be me. I'm gonna be me. No. Fuck y'all, motherfucker. Like, no. yeah, I think oh, what you want to hear. What you <laughs> Oosh gosh, Bobby, to be bop, 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 nigga, go. He's like, he's a representative of us, and he should have been more proud. I'm just yeah, saying. what you say. Please. All right, so you got to look, you got to understand the moment that you're in, right? Right. Uh, for whatever reason, Mace wasn't available. But now you're you're standing proxy for the situation, right? You got to understand that you're representing more than yourself. It can't just be about me. The whole, like, for that, in that moment, it then can't just be the about show. me. Then you don't know Cam. I'm, I, I know, I know, I, I've, I've understood and I know yeah, Cam yeah, I in terms of, like, who he is. But at the same time, you're representing black people yeah. nah. on CNN. He's not. That's not the time. Well, it, he's if, he, if he's not. in his podcast. It is what no, it is. Bro. People don't care about that. People are only well, seeing so him. He can't be yeah. like the one person to yeah. represent like all black yeah. men and how they feel about it. So he's just like, so you then know don't what? take but, the but, but, No, but he also did say like, yo, I don't support what Diddy was doing in that video. Like, it's disgusting. Like, he yeah. started off by That's... saying, I saw the video. I don't support it. But yo, check out my show. That I, like, he, <laughs> like, you know, like. And you know, I, yeah. No, okay. And I will say this, right? Because I'm glad. I did want to hear Pierre's perspective because it's kind of balanced here. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I did have a talking point for this, right? Yeah. Uh, it's really surrounding. Uh, how tricky maturation is in hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people are like, yo, Cam still to... acts like this. <laughs> <laughs> Stay with me, right? I love it. Especially with I how some rappers are introduced to us. Yeah. Right? Like, come on, we know Cam from being Cam, Dipset, <laughs> Paid in Full, Rico, all that fly shit, fly nigga shit, gangster shit. Facts. Talking Harlem. Harlem, talking player, talking fly, right? Yeah. And then Diddy. Right, and I don't want to group Cam and Diddy. I'm sure they didn't do the same types of things here. But uh, again, back to maturation in hip hop, right? Like, I think it is very hard for some of these people in hip hop, some of these men at least in hip hop, to find a, a, a cool kind of way to mature correctly. Mm -hmm. And I and I don't think they know how to gauge it. Or Cam, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. I think if we see Cam go conscious, oh my god, I, it's not going to bode well for him. I, what, what, nah, I, I, I disagree I, with that. I, oh, I would love to hear why. Because even when he's on, you, you think uh, niggas it is from what it is. Harlem want to hear that? <clears throat> I mean, and, and Cam, it could work both ways. <laughs> Real quick, I'm listening. In, in, in Cam's instance, right? Yeah. I think they, CNN, the powers that be, they selected Cam for a reason, right? <laughs> like no, you legit. Know, you're right. Like they they selected him is, for yo. a reason. <laughs> they tried to use him. And so to see him use the opportunity Absolutely. to be like, nigga, fuck, like, this is, this is what I do. Yeah. I do a ton of positive things. I got a co-host on the show and um, Stab Baby, right? Yeah. Stab Baby, 22-year-old. She started working on uh, our show straight out of college. Yeah. She's changed her life. She's just one example of some of the positivity that I'm doing as mm -hmm. Cameron. Mm -hmm. Why don't y'all ever highlight that shit? Mm. But instead, y'all want to put me on y'all platform. Y'all want to put up. me on national TV yeah. when we talking about Diddy and his so nasty I'm, shit. Like, y'all don't call me when it's time for me to right. put on or be mm -hmm. a representative a for positivity. Right. So it's I'm going to give y'all me at all times. It's a very good but point. But at the same time that he plugged pink, his uh, pink horsepower, he could have plugged all that. There's an art to... Hey, he did. When I'm, he, he said, had, I don't condone anything that that motherfucker is right. doing. Right. I'm okay. But so what, what else could he have plugged? What I'm saying is, this morning, he came out and said, hey, like... Um, exactly what you said. They always ask me to to say these things and never really about what I do. Cool. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Put him back into CNN last night. You were there, or uh, at the time of this recording, it was last night. You were there. In the in the midst of the mm -hmm. interview, there's a way to plug in what it is that you want to do. So if he's saying now, hey, I wanted to plug in all the positive stuff that I do, he could have done yeah, that. You're saying he could have just but very he's well done that. He chose to plug no. pink. But they kept asking how did you try to use me mm -hmm. in a moment as... 
a, a, a figurehead. You tried to use me as a mouthpiece. You tried to use me as a soundbite because you know what? You y'all called me because my podcast is so successful. Yeah. If I was just another nigga from that era, and 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 I don't I don't want to say any names, but there's a lot of people from Cam's era. Cam, he's been around since the '90s till yeah. now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people who they probably could have called who may not be as relevant. The reason y'all called me is because somebody on your team said, "Oh, Cameron, rapper '90s correlation with Diddy." Works with Mace. Y'all called me to be very strategic yeah. and specific right. yeah. to have me on your platform. So, so now that I'm on here, y'all are trying to use me for a clip. Y'all are trying to use me to speak out against somebody who I may have a relationship or even if y'all don't think I have a relationship with, y'all know for a fact my co-host, one of my mans, Mace, who I do a podcast with, he has a direct conversation or a direct uh, relationship with Diddy. So y'all are calling me for a reason. But still, though, like, there's, there's Wait, a way I, he could have... I, I just have a quick question. So if CNN really did want to say, like, Harlem Association, he's a rapper, whatever, and they wanted a rapper to come on the show and talk about it, are they wrong for asking Thank Cam? You. Like, Thank yo, you. we... Yeah, we want to have you on the show to talk about this. I don't this. think they're I was, wrong. I was just I about... To, I don't know, I'm just asking. I was just about to bring that up, Reggie. See, Pierre, you're isolating this moment, right? For sure, yeah. I'm over here asking you, like, do you think it's easier for a person like a, a Jada Kiss to mature in hip hop than a Cameron, right? Like, I could see how, like, a low key type, like, we saw Jada Kiss turn up for Diddy, right. the irony in there, right? Yeah. But again, he turned up because he had a reason why. And we wouldn't necessarily call that immaturity at that time, even though he said he wanted to throw a fridge on that nigga head. I would, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I would side with you yeah. if, I, if I've never seen Cam be mature. But, I've seen Cam be able to but, be mature. But, but that's the thing though. It, it, the, I'm talking about the maturation process as a whole, bro. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So like, again, we know who Cameron is. Mm-hmm. The producers at CNN know who Cameron is. What does that mean? It means like, you're right. We've seen moments of him being mature, but what have we seen more of? <laughs> him being like that on, national, being on national television. Right. So again, it just made me think about like, damn, like what is the proper way? I just feel like certain individuals have a tougher time finding a comfortable place to mature at Honestly, without looking at, look, looked at being looked at as weird or anything like I that. I appreciate you know? the authenticity because yeah. there's a lot of people who get on certain platforms and can't be themselves. Yeah, it's a fact. So for him, and we see it every single for every single the last however many decades we've seen him get on um, Fox News. We've seen him yeah. now on CNN. We see him on his podcast. He is who he is. It is what it is. Like I, I respect it yeah. personally. I understand what you're saying, P. Like maybe he's supposed to be a representative, but again. Somebody who's been in the game for so long, like you understand what it is that they're doing. The propaganda, the 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 strategic selection of choosing me to talk about this. And then again, y'all ain't asking me anything about what I got going on. Y'all think I'm just gonna sit here and talk about another man who I don't give a fuck about, who clearly is a piece of shit, mm-hmm. who y'all know is a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Y'all just got me on and here to co-sign the fact that he's a piece of shit. And not for nothing. You know how many niggas got erectile dysfunction watching CNN? There's, but there's nothing wrong with that. Do you know how many of them got erectile dysfunction watching CNN? <laughs> but what they got to do? There's with nothing wrong. He with plugged that. his uh Big his, his sex juice. Oh. He that's fine. <laughs> I'm not I'm not I'm not mad at the fact that he did that. Cool. Yeah. They didn't ask you about it, but you still chose to do that. Cool. Right. Just as easily as he did that, he could have also done the same for everything else that they do positive. Maybe but, maybe but Mace was choose. praying. He didn't cho- he didn't decide in that moment, hey, like I know they're not asking me. Like, yo, bro, I, I do vi- I do video and interview stuff all day. It's basically what I do with in life, right? I've seen people be able to, and again, in in maturity, be able to, hey, like, they didn't say this, but I'm gonna just say this in the flow of what I'm saying. I think that was mature. I think when he said I'm about to get some cheeks, he could have used a lot of other words for cheeks. And he could have used a that lot. Is, that like, is an accurate representation. Is, I think that is an accurate. Like, and not for nothing. This is who yeah, I yeah. am. Why are you ashamed of a black man saying those things no, on national there, television? There's, huh? a, there's a way he could have said it, right? Why? One, be two, more proper and adhere bro, to America's two, guidelines. Two. He's got <laughs> he, he's got Abby there. Like yo, yeah, represent yeah. us as a whole. I, 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 I would be Abby. proud. Like, yeah. Go go, Alex. Because I'm like, I hear what you're saying. Yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, I'm just joking. <laughs> I did kind of feel a little bad for Abby because you could tell, like, she also I that's very that's yeah. very hard. Like that job, she's 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 talent like, though. You know, we we work in this space. Talent yeah. is gonna be talent. You're gonna show up, yeah. do what you're no, told. She, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, why yeah, I'm like, yeah. that she, she just wanted to do the best job. And she's yeah. a professional. She Absolutely. did exactly what she was supposed Absolutely. to do. Absolutely. The only thing that I'm like, damn, I wish it a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I wish it would have been a different show. I wish it would have been somebody who wasn't black. <laughs> 
Like I wish you would have had that been interaction crazy. with somebody. Nah, that, that like, might have been worse. Cry. It may have been, I don't know if it would have been worse. But don't it's cry. like, because what I did and what I want everybody else to do, when y'all go watch this cam clip, I want y'all to watch her. She's a professional. Stoic. She didn't break character. Facts. She didn't smirk. Yep. She didn't laugh. She didn't even acknowledge the fact that she knew the language that he was speaking. Yeah. Because as black people, we all know. We, we understand. All, I don't give a fuck. And I'm going to talk to everybody right now in black. Like, she no good, matter too. how uptight you are, no matter how educated you are, no matter wherever you are, your status in life, we yeah. all got a cousin, an uncle, a friend. <laughs> Who talks like <laughs> like that? Like that? Like yeah. who we talk? About. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you. Oh, it does. It does not matter. It doesn't matter the rooms are we in. So I can assure you that Abby has a, a relative, a, a family member, a For friend, sure. a friend of a friend who yeah. she's been around in some capacity that has talked like Cam, who has looked like Cam. She understood the language. She oh, ain't yeah. asked him. Hey, so I when you tell. say you're gonna get some cheeks, what is cheeks? <laughs> yeah. Now I can tell she used to uh, fuck some hood niggas. I yeah. got I, I can tell. I got a confession. Oh, shit. oh no! <laughs> I got a confession. You, you did something with her? No, 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 not about Abby. Oh, salute to Abby, phenomenal. Yes, big salute to Abby for real, for real. So, as a black man in America, okay, right. Whenever I see other black people, I only, mo for the most part, get really comfortable if I hear them say "nigga." You have said this like six times on the pod, Pierre. No, no, I never said it on the pod. This is the first time. Yes, you have. <laughs> no, I've, I've said uh, I might have, but. That my truth. I knew exactly what you were gonna say. <laughs> that's your gauge. That's your my, my truth. Because then, like, yeah, I guess for the most part, yeah, that's just my truth. <laughs> Thank you if, for if, your if, truth. If, if not, if I if I haven't heard it, I don't know if I could trust you. <laughs> but not for nothing, though, Pierre. The the moment where he's drinking the pink horsepower, he's joking about getting some cheeks. That's probably the most immature moment of the segment. Because he was pretty serious in his answers that Savon played, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, you know, Mace is more connected to, P, uh, to Diddy, whoop de whoop uh, I'm not sure about anything. I know uh, Diddy through uh, Mace and Biggie, whoop de whoop yeah. He did kind of keep it <clears throat> mature on those types of things, but right. like, I'm still going to be me. I'm throw nah. a little me also, on Also, like, that. let's be, like, serious for, like, two seconds. That was kind of, like, crazy to do on air. Like, <laughs> like it was actually kind of insane. That. Like, national TV, hard, bro. So. I wish I could get to that point. That takes courage. It does. He like, was definitely nervous too. He was nervous. I'm not gonna lie. Like <laughs> sometimes I just want to be a better man. <laughs> yeah. You say you won't be bad man. You know it's hard out here for a man. I'm just saying. <laughs> if I was Batman <laughs> or Iron Man, I might be able to do this man. <laughs> Come on, man. What the fuck, Did man? Just... Shout out to Cam. What the fuck, man? <laughs> <laughs> nah, cause what the fuck, man? Oh God! Uh, you know it's hard out here <laughs> between Kim and Terrence Howard, man. I don't know what the fuck we gonna do this week as a black coach because I think nah, what Terrence, Terrence Howard. <laughs> Nah, nah, we need that nigga. Yeah, Between facts. Terrence, we need that nigga. Cameron, I think if it we is put money oh. symmetrical. <laughs> Wait, what you was about? To... If we put money, it's more money in Terrence Howard pocket. You can turn to Elon Musk. We need that nigga. <laughs> you can turn into Iron Man. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, man. We need that nigga. <laughs> Did y'all see Terrence Howard on Joe Rogan? Let me tell you something. I watched. I forgot what playoff game I was watching. I literally came to the game late. Like I turned on the game late because I was so stuck <laughs> in the rabbit hole. It just pulled you. You ever you ever have a conversation with somebody, right? With a man. <laughs> you, you ever ask a question to a man? <laughs> and then, when you ask the question to the man, like instead of just answering directly to that question, he takes you down 40 other <laughs> rabbit holes. Yes. Yes. Kanye. And, and still that's exactly how yes. I felt when I was watching Terrence. But it was like You're like, wait, what the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Part of me was like, wait, maybe I'm just fucking dumb. <laughs> maybe he's right. No, because again, he had a lot of theories on that podcast. And shout out to the Joe Rogan podcast. You know, that is where I wouldn't I, I would say people that like to use their mind go. People okay. that are thinkers. You're going to talk. You're yeah, going to talk. You're going to talk, you're gonna yeah. get into some very in-depth, inept conversations, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they do on a Joe Rogan podcast, yeah. right? So I was kind of expecting that already, but <laughs> this nigga confused Joe Rogan. <laughs> I've never I seen never that. Seen oh my God, I love when like you realize, okay, I, it is a little confusing, but then you really lock in. You're like, okay, I'm going to under, I'm gonna fucking understand what he's <laughs> fucking talking about. He's trying to say. And it doesn't work. That's it's how I feel about work. Gunna's lyrics. <laughs> I literally try so hard to be like, what the fuck is he saying? And then I really try to concentrate and then he'd be like, and I slide on a bit. And, then, and I like, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> and then you. I just surrender. I just surrender. Marvel That's how we 
Nation of Cast this nigga is Iron Man. They need this nigga. Or Doctor Strange. <laughs> Doctor Strange. Now wasn't he wasn't he on the uh, Marvel movie? They got rid of him, right? They for got Don Cheadle. For my man. Your man. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Damn. For my man. Damn. 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 I, I when your brain was like, wait, what? I was listening. I'm trying to pick up the jewels. I'm like, yo, this nigga really might be Iron Man. Man. Like, I didn't know where he was taking us. <laughs> I know he had a ton of patents. I know he was like pulling yeah. up some websites. He was like, yo, yeah. you got to check out IUDCEU college and shit. Like, he was pulling up mad references. I'm like, oh yo. shit, this nigga, he's either the See. most, the, the most intelligent. <laughs> Yeah, smartest man to ever walk the earth, right? Or, <laughs> we just or dumbest. He needs help. <laughs> We're like the most and ridiculous. I'm trying treatment. to tell you. See what made me think that I was a little fucking stupid and pacified. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kendrick. <laughs> Y'all, y'all missed it. I, nah, I got it. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Good. Good. Music that was good. I didn't think it was funny. Like, was oh, I, really, I just didn't really. I Damn. I he, said, he said, no, Alex, I heard you. It just wasn't funny. He, yeah. said, he, said, it, he said it was whack. Oh, Alex, you really, he really said it. And he was like, no one's laughing. He's like, oh, you guys didn't hear me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so stupid. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. That was a good joke. All right, but now for real for this time. What made me feel like I was stupid in the moment is because Terrence started to highlight the founders of some of these concepts and theories. Tesla. Right. And the uh, I forgot Nick. the dude's name. The dude that started the periodic table. Oh, Demetrius Mandeleev. That don't sound like that nigga name, but look nah, it up. Yeah, yeah, he started... Just he, check, double check. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah you got to get in front of you. Nah, double check. But I was maybe, you know, right, you could be right. I don't know. Remember, I'm confused still. <laughs> <laughs> when he started to break down their concepts, like he was, he basically came in an episode trying to debunk a lot of the theories that we've heralded in school, that we've heralded over the years, that we've just known for fact. And then when Joe Rogan, smart ass, ain't know what to say, that's when I said, oh shit, I've been dumb. <laughs> I've been dumb. I, which I, I don't know. It was Demetrius Manley. Thank you. Way. I'm sorry. See? You know, you, you know, know, I'm the science buff here. You are. Come my on, fool. I just had to make sure because them niggas was naming mad names. Yeah, yeah. My fool. It was. Nah, but yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe was stuck. Galileo, was stuck. them niggas was naming <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I admit I did not watch it in full, but yeah. I don't know if this tweet was a joke or if like he really said this. Did he say that he remembers being in the womb? Yeah, that's how he opened the pod. <laughs> that was that was in oh like the God. first hour and a half. Wait, that's how he opened the pod. He that's said, a real thing. So what did how <laughs> he said I knew I was different. Right now, <laughs> wait, we get on this podcast like I like to think I'm different too. I always talk about yo, I got mad high work ethic and shit. I got a landing strip on the back of my head. Like I know I'm different too. I got mad. Different <laughs> Qualities. He looked at Joe Rogan in his face and he said, You know what, man? When I was in the pussy, man, <laughs> I remember <laughs> seeing the light, man. My mama used to put the light on on the stomach, man. He did. Nah, he, <laughs> he said he didn't know he was in the fucking stomach. He just heard voices. It was his mother voice or some shit. And when I saw my hang, man, the hang, I ain't know it was a hang, the man, hand, man. But I knew it was something. <laughs> so I remember being in my mom. Put, now I don't know if he remembers coming out the joint. I don't know, but. He said he had oh. a deep Was he being like now, dead serious? He was very yes. serious. Straight face. This entire, like, Straight face. He's an amazing actor. And, and one <laughs> yeah, because that's why I don't trust him because he's an actor. Like, he's reasons, also very educated, though. I didn't know that. Yeah. He is. Yeah, I didn't, know, I didn't that. know that. A lot I of really the things didn't. that he said, and I didn't look it up in real time, but I also, again, one of the reasons why I think the Joe Rogan podcast is like the biggest podcast in the world is not only because of Joe Rogan, but it's also because of one of his producers, Jamie. Got you. Jamie is somebody who does research in real time. Jamie mm -hmm. is actually one of the people who inspired us to kind of take that model and implement it into Joe's podcast right. when you were acting as screaming, screaming right? Shit, yep. Like, yep, yep. That's Jamie's role on that podcast very important. is very and important Alex because well. yeah, yeah. he Thank brings you. up real time <laughs> information for the guests yeah. for Joe yeah. Rogan, the host. especially with those topics. Yeah. And he's <laughs> extremely, extremely, and shout out to Jamie and all the producers in podcast land. Mm -hmm. But he's extremely accurate with the information that he pulls up for Joe Rogan. Mm -hmm. So as Terrence Howard is speaking to Joe Rogan, he's asking Jamie, "Hey, can you pull this up? I got proof on some of the patents that I made that." Tesla and Sony and Microsoft and some of these larger companies have yeah. worked off of, they were my ideas back in the 90s when I patented, but I'm not getting money for it. So 
It's a very interesting mm, yeah, concept, right. a very interesting interview. I didn't look up. I didn't personally fact check him. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, I guess it goes back to like the TMZ rule. Like there's certain outlets that we believe to find facts and truth. And Jamie mm -hmm. on that podcast is hey. one of the people who I take like I'm, you know, I'm to do the job. I'm, I'm rocking with my black man because <laughs> I ain't seen none of you scientists come out. Y'all scared, huh? <laughs> And, and Y'all want to come wrestle with my man Terry Southside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, usually, you know, people come real quick, start debunking shit. Oh, actually, in the Protagonist mm -hmm. theory, blah, blah, blah. Like, I ain't seen nobody come out yet. Yeah. So I don't know if he got the scientist shook. But that's the thing. That's my man, When T. we hear about Kanye West. That's my man. Right? Kanye West. Yeah. A lot of people deem him to be crazy. So now I can't even look at somebody like a Terrence Howard and say he's a crazy man. Because... <laughs> He really might be spitting facts. Like yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not yeah. a scientist. I'm yeah. science is not my thing. Like I, I, I enjoy the discourse. And one of the things that I really love about the Joe Rogan podcast yeah. is it challenges thought. Absolutely, it challenges yeah. your thinking. Absolutely, despite what you believe in, what you don't believe in. There's some guests that come on. There's some mm -hmm. conversations that they are willing to have mm -hmm. at such a large platform that is just going to make you second guess certain things yeah. and think a certain way. Different yeah. perspectives. And yeah. not for nothing. Like one topic, and I want to go to a music show. I know who we're going to go to next. But one topic that stuck with me from that episode that made me think was the periodic table conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Terrence's theory around that was basically like, he said he would tell his professor sometimes like, hey man, you don't see like how... There are certain colors that are the same colors, but different elements. Like, you don't think there's anything to that? He used to say the professor would be like, nah, man, it's nothing. They're all different. And then in his research, he learned that a lot of those elements perform the same duties. For sure. Yeah. <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> so he yeah. was like, how did you guys not pay attention to... Uh, this is what I did like, though. He, he pays a lot of attention to vibration. Oh, my God. And, and frequency and sound. Bro, I was... Yeah, that fucked me up. That's what had me like, I'm stupid. That's my bag. Yeah. Yo, <clears throat> no, my whole so, bag. I didn't even know. So I'm sci stupid. Scientists have... Down the rabbit hole a little bit. When let me know when when to stop. But Cook, so, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, I'll tell you. Hey, word. Sci I got you. Scientists have found out. So there's this, there's a thing called the the a hedron. A hedron, right? Um, that sounds like a slur. It, yeah, it does, low key. <laughs> <laughs> but they 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 basically, long story short, scientists are trying to develop a black hole on Earth. That was a good. And they they've taken they've deconstructed the elements in atoms, and then found that um, some of those elements they could create the black hole, right? Long story short, um, they also realized and found out that um, different things operate on different frequencies or vibrations, quote unquote. So, take an example: uh, cancer cell. Cancer cells. They found that if you can um, reduce an element down to the same frequency that a cancer cell is in, um, that a cancer cell has, you can turn off that uh, part of the cancer cell to tell it to stop operating as a cancer cell. Right. So basically. Things operate on different frequencies, and people also operate on different frequencies. And it it could, it's basically just a slight uh, bit of deviation that will cause you to think, "Oh, wait a minute!" Like like Terrence said, these elements look differently in the light, so on and so forth. And if you're if if you don't know how to harness that, right? Especially someone in an esteemed position as a teacher, you know, a lot of things go missed. I always say too, and this is my last point. I always say. Um, Power unharnessed, <laughs> potent power unharnessed will always only be potential. Thank you, so. Pierre. That was very insightful. <laughs> this nigga across me just said some bullshit. I heard him. Nothing, yeah, bro. I heard him. What? What I'm, 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 I'm looking at he it right pissing me off. You can see him, right? He don't what like. Nah, nah. Savon, Savon told us he don't like thinking. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Get that nigga. He told us. He told us that's not what he does. Like, he showed me. Like, he said that nigga don't read. Like, he was, hey, you told us he was dumb. Yo, I'm <laughs> looking at. Told us he was dumb. Dumb. I'm looking at him right now. He was like, yo, this. He looked mad disinterested. Like, yo, bro, you gotta learn something. But hey, to nah. your point real quick. No, no, no. Fuck your little dumbass points. I, I, I want to do a little conspiracy theories real quick. Okay. All right, real quick. To add to your point, we go to this next topic. Yeah. I support Terrence because if he truly is, and I'm glad you brought up like those cancer cells, mm -hmm. if he is trying to change the way we look at things to help the world, let's put my money behind a nigga. Elon Musk. Him. Facts. Elon Musk. Let's do it. Fuck it. Facts. Fuck it. You know what I'm saying? But let's again, see what we discover. Please, y'all go check that out. Um... It was a very... I didn't even finish it. I'm going to go back to it because... <laughs> yeah. I, I, I still got a ways to go. I, I, I go ended off when shit. he was talking about Robert Downey Jr. doing him wrong. Okay. Again, Robbie Down, Robert Downey... I said Robbie. <laughs> Robert Downey Jr. Um, he's beloved, I think, in the black community. And a crackhead. Well, I mean, <laughs> my fault was. My fault. He was. My fault. He was. He was. 
He was. It was I think it might have been. But you got to believe crackheads, right? Like, ain't that what I said at the time? Reform. Episode? You got to believe the reform. All right. We fuck with a lot of reform crackheads. Y'all I know. know. Y'all know the one I yeah. go to the most. Ooh. She sing. She got vocals. She Capricorn. I'm going to just leave it right there. Ooh, yeah. There's a lot of crackheads who we really fuck with. Stand on. Stand on your truth, King. Mary J. Damn. Wait, what? She but got through that. I know. A crackhead. <laughs> she got through it. She got your seven boots they now. They get through it. No, they get through and it. And they sold out. And they sold out. I wish that I was around for cracking the night. No. No, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. No, 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 no. I actually I would do it. I didn't say I just would love. <laughs> like, I'd be conflicted because the nigga I am, I would want to like <laughs> flip that shit. But like, damn, I'm doing that to my community. You don't want to try it? Nah, hell no. Get money. Say Vaughn. <laughs> no, but in the, the 80s. Let's no, move no. forward. No, 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 no. Nah, I'm going to be the listen. nigga and paid in full. Let's be progressive. Serving the fees. I'm just saying. BBS is on a sob. You just said at the top of this episode. BMW, Benz. Your shit was trendy. Yeah. You like mm. trendy shit. Yeah. You was vibing with the trendy. Like BBS is on BMW. Bro, you had the, the, the <clears throat> no sleeve yeah. jean jacket. <laughs> with, with, with the no ash sleeve on, on the car. I had, I had a sleeve, like, motherfucker. It was just trendy. That's a trend. It was trendy. Yeah. So, Motherfucker, <laughs> it was a sleeve on it. Smoking crack was a trend in the eighties. So you would do that trend, and that's your problem. But it was know. a racist and that's trend, Savon, and Facts. we are not going to support it because cocaine was the more you know <clears throat> the version. One. You ain't oh, see paid in full, nigga. Of course I did. You I'm remember when saying, that nigga went to go see? You know what I mean, I did. homie up top. But I'm just saying, I think it would have it, it would have been tough to say no. No, for, it for you, no, it wouldn't. for us. For you, no, 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 nigga. No, 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 no. We you just talked group, about group all of us are not easily influenced. We don't have FOMO. <laughs> and we like to think. We would have not done crack. <laughs> we got to be real, though. I'm being real with you. I would be selling <laughs> no, that shit. No, the way that me and, <laughs> me and Savon love hookah, we might. <laughs> oh, shit. So I'll be selling to y'all? I, I got to be real, though. Like <sighs> You want to you... flip that? You want to see how rich the niggas was? You ain't, you ain't hear the story about rich porn on them niggas? There's two sides. Niggas have money, man. You could go either way. You could go, you could sell, or you could use. Like, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't in the 80s. I'm just saying, like, like money. And, and, and we thank it. God for that. Because think about, like, ima imagine, bro, like, that's probably why there's so many 80s, baby. It's probably wild easy to, like, play <laughs> game. Wait, what? Like, yo, shorty, I got that thing on me. <laughs> what the fuck? And she's oh like, oh, what you God. got? And you pull what? out a rock? <laughs> Oh my god, <laughs> nigga, you are probably getting all the puss. Yo, I see what you're saying though, because there was a time that you know before they realized how bad it was. Yeah, where it was just a trendy you drug. Didn't know, mm -hmm. nigga, like me vibing. when I hear some trendy shit. Let's flip it. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> That's why. But I don't there's get... also there's also girls that don't do drugs, but the ones that do it might. Like, because there are trendy drugs now, <laughs> and if a guy pulled it out, the drug's not, you know. Molly was trendy. Yeah, and like, there's Jones some girls that are Molly. like, ah, I don't want to do it. But Jones was doing Molly. I remember that era. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Imagine crack. <laughs> like, it might have been a whole different time. I don't know. I don't know. Come on, man. Come on, man. Um, What we got? We about to get about it here. Yeah, I don't know if y'all yeah, got one last. Y'all want to see my landing strip again? No, we good. Uh, Cardi B. <laughs> fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Oh, uh, Cardi. <laughs> She's he's like, no, we're good. no, we're good. We're fine. Yo, we're, can, can let's we, talk about music before we get can out. Can we actually make that the the episode art? No, we cannot. Nah. Please, I would love to. Please. No, 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 strip? no. Thanks. Please, please, no. From the from the facts. Like, we're not gonna see Savon from the back here. I don't know what's getting in the out today. Yeah, I'm cool. Y'all been recording for a long time. Y'all exasperated. It's At least okay. The One more title, topic. Landing strip. Come on, man. Okay. Come on. All right. I'm with you, Alex. All right, all right, but let's do it. That's my people, Reg, right there. Now, Cardi B. Uh, Cardi B, you guys know she's been dropping singles, uh, uh late 2023, early 2024. Mm -hmm. It looks, it was alluding as if she was trying to drop an album. I remember when she came to my job, it was a bunch of promos, it was a bunch of security guards. So I was like, oh shit, an album is on the way. It's coming. Um, she got flustered with a fan on Twitter and said, uh, do, 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 do. like a, pan, a fan, a fan basically posted up. Mim uh, mom uh, mocking Cardi B like, oh, my, uh, my album is supposed to drop this year. She responded to that tweet and said, uh, D -d 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 no, it's just annoying. This means a lot to me. Uh, it's always a complaint and crying with this pussy ass fan base. That tweet has now been deleted. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up and why this is so interesting to me, hey, Cardi, whenever you feel like putting out music, salute. I get it. Do you? Personally, on this podcast, I've already said, and remember when we had this conversation last time, I was like, wait, is the window kind of closing for her? Since then, I've thought about it, and I'm like, you know what? She's a star. Like, mm -hmm. she could do TV. She could do makeup. She could sell things. That's the good thing about she her. Can. You can market her, right? Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, in my head, I'm like, you know what? She's already well off. Um, 
trying to top an album like that would be so difficult. So I can get as a creator how you would overthink things mm-hmm. and and overthink yourself and be like, damn, it's a lot she's, of pressure. It's a ton of pressure, especially with the milestones of that album. For sure. Right? Yeah. Now, what was interesting to me about this was that her label kind of spoke for her and was like, nah. Oh, she, I was just about, yeah, I just pulled it Go ahead, up. Reggie, go ahead, pull it. So, I mean, I hope we were talking about the same tweet, but her I label is Atlantic Records. Yes. And after Cardi was like, yeah, I'm not releasing an album. I'm just chilling. I'm vacationing this year. No album this year. <laughs> they, Atlantic Records tweeted, they're like, oh, <laughs> Cardi B's upcoming album is one of the most anticipated this year. We can't wait to pull it up, put it out, even if we have to sneak into her studio and take it. So basically, <laughs> Cardi B was like, yeah, I don't want to fucking drop an album. And Atlantic basically was like, uh, 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 uh. Hey. Yes, she is. <laughs> I ain't so. never seen a, a record label done that before. Yeah, that was a very never like not very PR ish tweet. It was just kind of like a casual, like, oh yes, she is it, dropping an album, guys. It was almost like Atlanta was like, yeah, you would have thought, like, you would have <laughs> yeah, thought so that, he wasn't releasing it. Never seen that. That's so interesting to me because it's like <laughs> so. What did what did Cardi mean when she tweeted like, yeah, I'm not dropping an album, I'm vacationing this summer? Did she really think that? She didn't have to drop the album, or like, what did she think was gonna happen? Personally, I, I don't think know. I think she was getting into a space where she was becoming comfortable releasing music, right? Mm-hmm. Hence why we got the singles. And I, I think maybe life has just hit her. Uh, I think she referenced also the whole people only care about the Drake and Kendrick Lamar shit. I mean, in hindsight, now it's kind of past. Yeah. Right. Like, um, it's not much to cover on there. It's over. Yeah. It's pretty much over. You know. So. I don't know if that was one of the caveats as to why she was like, you know what, I'm good, and no music this year. But again, when when you when you well off, when you are when you're a wife, when you a mother, focusing on something that's gonna put stress on you, then focusing about the tour that's gonna put stress on you, yeah. then shit, we we dudes, we just put on outfits and get ready. The glam, the makeup it takes for a lot of the, especially your artists mm-hmm. that have magnitude. And making sure your body looks right. That's all a lot of that for shit. Women, Pictures, yeah. videos. And then also, she had one of like the biggest albums of the last decade. Oh, so, for did. sure. She did. Statistically, of, absolutely. Yeah, like, there's absolutely. a lot of pressure that comes with trying to follow that up. There's mm-hmm. a lot of pressure with making sure you can live up to the same type of catalog, the same type of music, the same type of impact, right? Like, you don't want to fall short. Mm-hmm. It's somebody who has been super transparent and, and open with yeah. her relationship with public and, and, and just being famous. Like, mm-hmm. Cardi is one of those who's, who tell y'all how she feels. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. she's not the Beyonce's of the world where you don't know anything about anything. She's not the Kendrick Lamar's of the world where you don't know anything about anything. Like, we know what Cardi stands. So, for her to be like, hey, guys, I don't want to do it. I'm not feeling it. Maybe she feels like, yo, this music isn't resonating with me. So, I don't think it's going to resonate with other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe she feels feels like, yo, I think there's other women who are doing amazing things out there. So I don't want to really compete. I don't want to insert myself in there. I don't want to really fall short of that. Right. When she was probably just as influential as a Nicki Minaj. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think once Cardi B kicked down some of those doors, that's when we see the Meg Thee Stallions, we see the Sexy Reds, we Waver. see the yeah. Lottos. Like Cardi B really introduced a wave of women. I think Nicki Minaj kicked down the door mm-hmm. for the current artists today. Oh, for sure. But I think the certain type of uh, like influence today, in, yeah. I think it, it was Cardi B. So for her to be like hesitant mm-hmm. on putting out an album, mm-hmm. I can understand from a creative standpoint, but from the label standpoint, it's like, all right, man, we've been waiting. And you're We're our told. biggest artist. We've been waiting. Yeah. See, that's what I thought about. I'm glad you mentioned that. A Boogie just put out a really phenomenal album. He's mm-hmm. also under Atlantic. Uh, again, both from the Bronx, those people, is A Boogie, Cardi B? No. No. We still love A Boogie, though. Ain't no problem. And when I saw Atlantic respond to that, it made me think like, damn, are they getting to a point where they're like, all right, how much longer is she going to be our main priority here? Mm. Again, I know a lot of artists are uh, not going through the standard traditional 360 route of fiending to go through a label and things of that nature. But Atlantic, that's a powerhouse for you. Mm -hmm. And what I started to think about was, yo, Cardi also gets so much money outside of music. Yep. So then I went, okay, cool. If she's making so much music that she doesn't probably have to, I don't know what contract looks like, but I was just gonna ask. If yeah, if 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 she's getting money from appearances, uh, uh, things aside from music, and she's comfortable, does the label start to fill away? Right, oh. right, because we're we're marketing. You say you got a record ready. We like put, we need your music. Like you say you yeah. was ready with bongos. I bet we marketed bongos. We did the video. We put Megan Stallion on it. Boom. All right, cool. That one came. We did another one. You say it was up and it stuck. We put money into that one. You say you wasn't ready yet. I'm not I, mad though. It's uh, yeah. As a fan, as a fan, 
if 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 I'm her, like we see so many times where the labels have the power. Yeah, and milk it's you dry. Not, yeah, it's nice to yep. see her say, "I'm I'm gonna do this on my pace. I'm gonna Absolutely. do this when I want to do it." I understand y'all gotta make money, but this is still my life. At the end of the day, like y'all don't make money if I don't perform. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't make money if I don't do what I do. Y'all don't make money if I'm not who I am. So does if I don't want to do it, y'all got to wait. She has the upper hand. Yeah, y'all got to wait. Do I think Cardi B's career looks different if she goes independent eventually? I don't look at Cardi B for music. No, I know, but if you know we what did, I'm saying, so. but if we did though, like let's say like somewhere down the line, because you're mm-hmm. right, I'm with you. I do see her turning into like a TV personality, getting she's into Cardi products. B, like, no, I know, right? She's but just dope. a Cardi B who's used to selling phenomenally, <laughs> right, and records with the going, help of the label, with the help of the label, yeah. and going platinum. I don't know if she likes going because independent and putting out an album that does 60K a week for the first week. I don't know. music does so well and sells so well and is so commercial because right. like, I think Atlantic prioritizes her. Absolutely. So she does get the tip top like treatment, treatment yeah. so I'm sure if she went independent, of course she could do it. She has so much fucking money, millions and trillions. She's creative and all that. But like, I do think her being on Atlantic's good side has had a lot to do with her success. I agree, because she was a raw yeah. talent coming in, right? Yeah, yeah. they kind of molded that. But if I'm Cardi B, <clears throat> I could look at a situation like a Lauren Hill, right? I could One look album. at Lauren Hill and say, "Yo, I did what I came but to you do." You hate Lauren, and you love Cardi. Fake ass nigga. No, not true. When did we talk about this? It, he hates Lauren? This is, for years. This is documented. Yeah. This is documented You don't like Lauren Hill? Talk to him. Don't we don't ap- have to get into I, it. I, no, I don't appreciate it. Nah, because he misunderstood, right? I don't appreciate <laughs> The misunderstanding to save all. I don't fucking appreciate <laughs> how she goes about her relationship with her fans. So I'm going to always stand on that because I'm a person of the right. people. You still like Doja Cat? Why wouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but Doja Cat also doesn't give a fuck about her fans, and you call that sexy. I haven't heard Doja Cat come late to her shows. I haven't heard. That's true. She does Doja. put on a phenomenal you get show. What I'm saying, right, like, right, right. I'm so just she does about care. Your yeah. relationship yeah. with your audience, the people that pay to come see you. Like, right, right, right. my issue with Lauren Hill has nothing to do with her music, her artistry, her the person. It's her absence. It's just the dismissiveness of hardworking people. I don't, she's I, working I, on that right now. That's cool. I don't. I don't like. It is. It's cool. I don't give a but fuck. You gonna bump it when it come out? I'm gonna listen to it just <laughs> like if Dr. Dre ever dropped the Chronic. Whatever. I'm gonna listen to that too. Like there's some artists who just built that relationship with us as a fan. Where I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna take a listen to it. But I'm not waiting. I'm not holding my breath. But I think there is an instance where Cardi B could be like, you know what? Maybe I'm the Lauren Hill of this rap shit. I gave y'all one phenomenal album. Mm-hmm. Y'all know every word to every song. Mm-hmm. It sold millions and platinums. I could tour off of this album forever. I can continue to do features. I'll always have a name value. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, And maybe I just don't want to continue to be an artist in that way. And that's fine too. And I'm not mad at that because she'll actually be a bit more active than Lauren. See, Cardi has given us features over the last few mm-hmm. years, right? Amazing yeah. features. A little sprinkle of a single here and there, but I don't see her stopping her feature run. Mm-hmm. anytime soon even if she decides to take a break for five years four years i still see her hopping on hot songs and still being relevant when it comes to music so she doesn't starve her fans her, that are there for her music mm-hmm. and like i think rap and and, and 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 just music in general it was just a way out for cardi like we for live sure. in new york we know plenty of people from the bronx we mm-hmm. know plenty plenty of people from brooklyn we know plenty of people who are in similar circumstances as a cardi b who just needed her out yeah and she just happened to find her out in music and so now it's like oh shit I did some of the unimaginable things that I wanted to do, and now I'm just here. Like, I'm not a quote-unquote rapper, right? Like, she doesn't give the passion of a Nicki Minaj who cares about the bars and the craft. And I don't know. Who genuinely I never about wants her. to put you know out another album. Like, she just happened to be so gifted, so talented. And that's something to think about life. Like, life is always going to give you certain gifts yeah. that you have to hone and you have to craft, and your gifts may get you to the pinnacle of an industry. And it just happened to happen for Cardi B in that way. Like, I've never heard her say she wanted to be the greatest MC ever. Like, that's one of the things with Eminem. Mm-hmm. Eminem is like I want to be lyrical, miracle, lyrical, favorable. Like I want to be that. I like ooh, I bleed just hip hop or like yeah. that's just who he is, right? Like mm-hmm. it happened to get him where he is, but his passion is a, a hip hop rap student right. savant in that way. Where there's other people who I've never heard him say this, but I'm just gonna use his name, a flow rider. I don't think Flo Rida cares about the bars, bro. Oh, now the money there. I don't get, think he gives a fuck about- You know he got a big bag, right? You just spin my head right around, right around, right 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 and you go down, and you go down, 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 down. But y'all know he got a big 
bag, right? Big. Oh but, no, 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 I'm saying he has oh, hits. That's yes. what I'm saying. I'm oh no, 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 not just for music though. Oh, Celsius. There you go. Oh, no, he just bag. got a big bag in general. But I'm just big saying, bag. like, yeah. there's certain people, certain artists, like it's the it factor. Some people just have it. She has it, and yeah. she just got it. In all aspects of everything she does. I yeah. think it's like, no matter how phenomenal the second album is, she knows that there are going to be people who are like, ooh, it's not Invasion of Privacy. And she knows that. I feel like that's what's also scaring her. And the second thing is like, um, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was going to say. You're good. I'm going to add to that because you're right. Like, I don't know how I would feel if my first body of work, mm-hmm. every fucking song went platinum on it. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Like again, how to, do you to follow a, up to that? Hard, to yeah. a casual listener, that just sounds like, oh yeah, this song is really good. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. As, as a creator, like that's like mm-hmm. a rarity. <laughs> I <laughs> not love a, not the thing. people that go on YouTube and say, <laughs> y'all suck. <laughs> Like Salute I love, to them. no, yeah. I no, legit. I'm really happy yeah, yeah. that there's people who look at this podcast yeah. and be like, "Man, I don't know how y'all did this. Y'all fuck nah, y'all." Me like, too. Salute because to I don't want people to just shoot up and be like, "Holy shit, this is the greatest podcast ever," or "This is the right. greatest." And now we have to try to live up to Compare. that. We, we like, I want to build mm-hmm. this shit brick by brick. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. now, Genuinely. again, mm-hmm. sometimes you have the Cardi B's, you have the creators like the Bobby Altoffs, right? Mm-hmm. She's a creator that I could think of off the top of my head that she put out an interview or two interviews and Went she just. Shot to the top, yeah. and, then and now everything. she has to sustain that. Yeah. Now she, she, she has did a to little adjust. recalibrating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She has. She's yeah. definitely like changed a little bit, but it's like she's been through a divorce since that, mm-hmm. right? Like her life has changed dramatically oh, because of the during. success. Yeah. Like I don't want to. I appreciate building this shit brick by mm-hmm. brick, yeah. and those who think we are terrible at podcasting. Kudos Thank to y'all. you. Thank <laughs> okay. y'all. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Maybe yeah, it's just not y'all. for you. There are so many things that come yeah. on my algorithm that I look at and I listen to. I'm like, yo, this is not for me. Right. And that is perfectly okay. But there's also a community and a, there, there's a listenership that we're building and cultivating that actually fuck with us and that actually listen to us. So mm-hmm. the Cardi B route is tough when you excel to the top and now you got to kind of like maintain that. Mm-hmm. But it's almost impossible because how can you maintain that success? Or do better. Well, no, no, but directly to that, is I, this is exactly what what like I forgot to say but I remember this happened with Bodak Yellow where that popped off first so she shot to the top it was like one of the craziest songs ever then it was so much pressure to release her debut album I remember this because it was literally a whole thing and then J. Cole literally came in with like a Twitter hug I remember that moment like she was so scared to put out her debut album but she delivered and that's why I want to say like I don't know I don't know I kind of believe in Cardi though like I know why she's scared to um well, allegedly, to drop her sophomore album. But I feel like she could do it. Like, I feel like she could drop an album full of, like, platinum hits again, even yeah. though she's scared. Because it was Bodak Yellow, she was scared. Boom, she delivered. And now she's scared. And I feel like she could do it again. I don't know. Yeah. I want to hear it. Nah, me too. I-, I would love to hear it. I don't know if we're going to hear anything. but um, <laughs> You're like, I don't know if we're going to get it. But... I don't know if we're going to get it. I-, I just, that fucked me up. I've never seen a label directly respond <laughs> to an artist. Yeah. And then what's funny is she, directly after that statement, the next day, like, she gets a bunch of plaques for uh, all her uh, streaming uh, uh, accolades from Spotify. Rolling Stone cover story. Rolling, right? Mm-hmm. It did not even kind of seem planned, where it's like, I think the label's on some shit. Like, you know what? You ain't going to put out music, nigga. We just going to keep marketing. <laughs> whatever it We're is. going to get our money somehow. Whatever it is. Yeah. Music adjacent, whatever it is. We just we just going to keep placing you, man. Yeah, I'm not mad at Let's that. see what's up. Shout out to Cardi B. Yeah. We've had Shout some good, to you know... Every topic, I feel like we had like a good conversation about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like the Terrence Howard shit so. was so funny. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> nah, because was you really paying attention to the periodic table? I'm no, saying I that's was the not. There's, there's I a was lot not, of, Alex. There's a lot of good information on there. Very, very good information. Look, look at this, this nigga. <laughs> but the crazy thing is, like, <laughs> I've seen Terrence Howard pull up to a Memphis Grizzly <laughs> game with like eight women behind him. Balance. <laughs> Balance. <laughs> hey. You gotta be smart and horny. No, <laughs> can't be dumb and horny. Parable from the go, book of A. Because if you thank you, because if you dumb and horny, you turn to Diddy. Full circle. Nice mm. little bookend mm. ending I'm to the pod. I'm not You gotta be smart and horny. I'm not, we I'm can not turn him into Elon Musk if we all put some dollars behind him. You with it? But who? Terrence? Terrence. Yeah. You, you with it? Yeah, I'm with it. I, got I it. bet. I'll donate. I I'll bet. donate. Because the way he's sounding, we can send that nigga out of Twitter. But it's so we can reclaim hard, Twitter, bro. And I'll never forget what Sandra Bullock's ex husband said. Like. Why you remember that nigga? Because when he got a divorce, <laughs> I think. So nah, bro. <laughs> like, what the fuck, man? I remember what Justin James like said, like, bro. Like, <laughs> I remember what Reese Witherspoon's hairdresser's cousin said from 2006. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? But no, like, because like a movie real, bro. What happened? Like 
he <laughs> said the shit that I was thinking my whole life. Well, he said, How the fuck can you trust an actress? I, I agree oh, with okay. that. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he's Tough. like, bro, I don't know if you love me. Like imagine <laughs> Denzel Washington. Cry. Imagine yeah. like Leonardo yeah. DiCaprio. Like these are the top. Every yeah. time I see a scene with them, and I'm like, holy shit! Like I believe it. Like how do you know what's real? Yeah, because they it, can cry, they can argue on command. Like yeah. you know, Adrian Brody. Why that sound so familiar? Adrian Brody. What what, nah. what they, they do him at? Where That's a cute last name, bro. I'm, I'm thinking of Adrian Broner. Me too. I'm not about Broner. School. No, Adrian Brody. Brody. He played uh, Pat Riley in Winning Time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The actor. Yeah, actor. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he's acting. He's acting. I don't the, know none with, of their names. With, 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 with the hair, yeah, and he got the five fingers. He got yeah, really yeah, big yeah, nose. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I, know that, I know him. But he, you got like, to leave with that. He's an actor. He's an actor. I thought you was talking about activists and some shit. I ain't know who did that nigga was. Adrian, bro, like, yeah, he's one of those people. He's very convincing. Whenever I see him in a role, yes, there's certain actors, actresses. When it's like, yo, I believe you. I third. You ever watch Base Motel? Please tell me. Yeah, I definitely watch. Oh my god, Norman. Norman. Even his mother, shit. Norma. Norman, Norman nah. and Norma. She used like, to get me tight. Both of them, bro. They used like, to piss me off. It was nasty. It, 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 it was uncomfortable. Post- yeah, yeah, it was uncomfortable because it felt so real. Yeah. So yeah, like, yeah. imagine dating nasty somebody nasty. who has the ability to like transform who mm. they are like that. Like, nasty I gotta. Nasty. I can't even look at this man. And really feel like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. That that's why I asked you. I was like, was he being dead serious with the womb shit, or was he <laughs> acting? Yo, like, he was, was dead he... ass. I think that's what makes Joe Rogan such a great podcaster is that he admitted, like, he's a piece of shit actor. Oh, valid. So it's genuine. Like, he's like, yeah. I don't like acting. That's real. I can't act. That's why he like, did Fifth Factor. Yeah, like he's the host comedian. <laughs> shit was real. That shit was real. real. Mad nice. That like, shit was real, real. <laughs> edge of my seat. Duh. Whenever he tried to do like a sitcom, he was like, yeah, nah, that's not for me. Yeah, nah, sit your ass down, Joe. Yeah, we'll talk I like to some that. Niggas. I like that. You got to know your role. That's all it is. Yeah. You got to know your role. That's the moral of the story. Know your role, man. Get us up out of here, man. Get us up out of here, man. I think so. All right, y'all. This has been the Need to Know Podcast. What you need to know, when you need to know the Need to Know Podcast. And don't forget to check your periodic table. We're out of here. And wait, wait, wait. One other thing. <laughs> don't be a save on. What the fuck? You are such a make hater, sure, bro. Yo, make yo, sure you like that information. A, that's their relationship. Clean that's their no, that's not not our relationship. That's their relationship. They I like, don't hate. They like to hate on each other. That's what they do. Yo, that's what they that's do. some bullshit that you just did on me. <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing to do with that. Like, don't put me on that hating shit. Like, nigga, I don't do none of that. That was that's some PA real, shit, right? Like, what the fuck? That's PA nah, shit. That's the motivator. All right, Ty Ferretto, uh, please like, subscribe, comment, leave all thoughts anywhere, all right? This has been a Need to Know podcast. What you need to know, we need to know, you need to know podcast. Gang, man.